Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel, your car shipping business channel. I'm Jay. Thanks so much for joining us on a Tuesday night. You know, my goal every Tuesday night is to bring you another trade show level business presentation wherever you are because your business deserves the latest in auto transport news. So thank you so much for joining us. But are you busy? Listen, I know you're I know you're busy. You can skip ahead. Okay? So if it's not live later, you can click on the time codes right below this video. Feel free to do that. Just remember to like, share, and thanks for watching ATI. We sure appreciate it. Uh, tonight we've got another car shipping roundtable. We're talking automotive logistics, group business, networking, whether you're building a business, trying to stay profitable, finding your lane. Equipment, insurance, drivers, sales, marketing. Not only do we meet new car haulers, but we network with dealers, auctions, and sometimes OEMs. And it's not just carriers welcome in the round table. Dealers trying to better understand drivers, brokers trying to learn more about carriers, dispatchers that need to talk to brokers and dealers. And at the end of the day, if you can't work with a carrier, you're not moving a load. And if you are the carrier, everyone else really wants you to understand their expectations, planning, and communication. Without that, it doesn't matter how well you strap down a car. So tonight, we're going to start with Ty Thompson of Cars on the Move. We're going to add Joe Bercari of Midwestern Car Carriers. He's going to talk about cost and profitability. We're going to add Paul Machine of Black Book. He's got data, he's got EV info, and then about an hour from now, we're going to crank up the running lane roundtable, start talking about building a lane. So please join the live chat, ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business, because it's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. Thank you guys so much for joining me again on a Tuesday night. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time, please do feel welcome. This is an open forum. Auto Transport Intel is for everybody. So thank you so much. Please feel welcome. Please say hello in the live chat. Promote your company, product, service ask questions, make a friend, throw a lifeline. We've got industry news at the quarter hour. That's national news, social media news, front of the store, back of the store, what's being talked about, uh, running lanes, brokers, dealers, carriers, etc. And uh, ne networking, dude, tonight, we're get we just got back <laughs> yesterday. If you saw Cars on the Move, we went live on a Monday and we never do that. Surprise! We, we were in Vegas all week. And so we're going to be talking about that. Um, so that's definitely in industry news. Networking and news. So at the 40 minute mark, about 35 minutes from now, Ty Thompson, Cars on the Move, he's going to join me live on stage and we're going to catch up. Uh, I just talked to him yesterday, and I talked to him so much last week. By the way, Mike, check one, two, three. How we doing? How we doing? 
Um, and so Ty's going to help me introduce Joe Burkari of Midwestern Car Carriers. Joe has been on the show several times now. He's a friend of the show. Um, and he's got great information because this is a round table where we're really going to grow this into a large gathering. Hopefully everybody can make it in. Paul Machine's going to be here from Black Book with data and EV info. And they knocked it out of the park, those two together, Joe and Paul, about a month ago on EV Transport Plug-In. Still talking about that show. It's the Running Lane Roundtable, so it starts in about an hour. So if you are a carrier and you're on the road and you're joining us live, you've got still got time to park it, get that ELD uh, shut off, and, uh, and find a spot and join the show. And so this is really, this is going to be a great show. All right, do me a favor. Oh, hey, don't forget. Uh, what I want you to do is go ahead and click that share button. Click that copy button. We're going to be here, I don't know, 10.30, 11 o'clock Central Time tonight. Don't forget your like button. Grab the YouTube link. Text it, email it, share it on social media. Let somebody know. And if they don't know, go to autotransportintel.com. Click on sign up. Thank you so much. More and more people signing up all the time. I mean, right before the show, I, I saw another one come in. This is really, really amazing. And, you know, some people even said at, the, at Car Conference, you know, you guys are doing a good job. And so we really appreciate that. And this is our way of giving back. We give back every Tuesday night. Um, and that's, uh, we really do appreciate it. So here we go. We'll be right back. Jump in the live chat. Talk to you soon. Holly.com, United Road, Go NVTA. The links are in the live chat, so click Holly. Hey, how the loads doing? How are your loads doing? Go to Holly.com, get signed up, um, because we know that you've got load. You got your favorite load boards. What's your favorite load board? Is it Holly? Put it in the live chat. Let me know. And it, it, hey, you know what we also do is we ask for feedback. Do you have feedback? This is a safe place. Auto Transport Intel is an open forum. Let's go into that live chat. Holy cow. <laughs> Ty? Thank you, man. Thank you so much, Ty. Ty, my man, my brother. Um, you know, uh, we had an amazing time in Vegas. And um, not only did we have fun, you're going to see some pictures here in Industry News coming up. I mean, we, yes, we had fun. But we got a lot done, too. Talked to a lot of people. Um, and we also, we spent time with Black Widow. Thank you, Black Widow. Um, and even, like, I was making notes. Like, I was on my phone. We'd been there an hour. And I'm already like, okay, make sure I connect Jose and Joel. And then send that email to myself. And also, I was like, okay, make sure. I, I met Bob Gapinski. I'm like, okay, Bob and Tim need to talk. And so I'm making no, I mean, it was amazing. So awesome, man. Thank you so much, Ty, my brother. I mean that. So Ty was in here first. ATI to the moon, diamond hands. <laughs> okay. People, somebody new is going to be like, what is this uh, show? Um, hey, Kimberly. Kimberly is in here too. What's going on? Welcome to Tuesday Nights Live with your host, Jay. Join the live chat. Please do say hello. Thank you so much. Danny B is here. What's up, Danny B? David at Two Bears Transportation is here. What's up, Two Bears? Super Dispatch. Hey, Jay, Ty, Danny, everyone. Yep, we got to spend some time with Super Dispatch at Car Conference. Carrie Harris is here. What's going on, Carrie? Um, let's see here. Oh, Paul Machine says, hola. What's up, Paul? Paul's going to be on the show here in a bit. Mark Grodicky is here. Looking forward to a great show. Thank you, Mark. I am too. Oh, and Chris Chamberlain. Chris! Chris, thank you so much. I didn't know, um, actually I thought about you today, Chris. I didn't know if, if you were able to join the round table or maybe unavailable till later, but either way, you find a way to tune in and participate and we appreciate it. And we want you in the round table 
and let us know, you know, now that we're getting to know some folks by name, um, more specifically, if we can help you, if it's during a show, live chat, what can we do to help you? That's what we want to know. And, and who do you want to meet? Hey, here we go. If you see somebody on the show that you want to meet, that you want to talk to, we want to connect you. We do. There might be a bit of a screening process, you know, it's reasonable, but it's very light screening. We want to help. We want to connect and network because we're trying to keep this, you know, business professional. Of course. Um, how? What else do we have here? Uh, Mark, Ty is the man. He is the man. Uh, Danny B loves Super Dispatch. Let's. What is? It? When are you guys going to introduce a search feature within the app using keyword? Hmm. It's a good question. That's a really good question, Danny. Uh, Carlos is here. What's up, Carlos? ACB Logistics is in the house. Thank you, Carlos. Um, is Super Dispatch like Central? Now, there's a good question. Right? That's a reasonable question. Carrie Harris, very good question. Super Dispatch is probably going to answer. They probably already did. I'm probably... I'm probably I'm, there. <laughs> um, see? I'm late to the party once again. Uh, Super Dispatch is in the live chat. Um, ringing the cowbell. Thank you, Super Dispatch. So I think maybe I'll just go ahead and try to answer that for you. So Central Dispatch is a load board, and it's a big load board. And this, you know, this gets talked about too. Where's all the volume? But it's not just volume. There's also features, right? So Central Dispatch is a load board where you can book loads. Super Dispatch is a tool to help you manage those loads to do your... Uh, pick up inspections and deliver vehicles. So some similarities, but Central Dispatch doesn't have what Super Dispatch has. And there is a super load board, but then Central Dispatch really is the number one load board because they have the most loads. You know, and is it is that too much? Uh, Glenda Walker says hello. What's up, Glenda? Thanks for tuning in and saying hello. Really do appreciate it. Love to hear more about you, Glenda. Um, are you a carrier, dealer, broker? This dog is here. What's up, Travis? Had to wait in a swamp to get today to get water blew a hose. Ah, man. Yeah. That means you were camera ready. That's time, I like to say. Um. Okay, Super Dispatch. Advan uh, yep, answering questions. And, oh, Joe is here. What's up, Joe? Yeah, man. Thanks for tuning in, saying hello. That's awesome. Let's see here. Okay, I'm starting to catch up. Oh, Solo's here with us. All right. And Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. That's so cool. Yep, Black Widow. Pow, pow. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Man, Black Widow. It. Wow. Black Widow has awesome tech. They're a cool company. I actually I was hanging out with the installer guys because, you know, it's a... I mean, that's infrastructure. And I was hanging out with those guys, learning more about it. What a great group. Super nice. Um, and it's awesome tech. I, I can't say enough great stuff. Thank you, Black Widow. So cool. Uh, oh, Sour is here. What's up, Sour? And I read, you know, I know that these are aliases and screen names. I'm trying to keep track of all the information. My mind is a pile of mush. Uh, Salome Sapashvili, what's up? Thanks for saying hello. That's so cool. John Cochran, LAI Auto Transport from DC. Right? People have that memorized. Right, John? People are waking up in the middle like, yeah, LAI Auto Transport out of DC. He's here. Jose Lemus is here. What's up, Jose? Uh, oh, hey, Glenda's a broker. Cool. But never got started. All right. Well, this is a great show. Be interesting to... Uh, to you know, I'd love to hear. Actually, we'd love to get feedback. Did you learn anything? Man, I hope so. Good golly. Ants Transportation. What's up, Ants? Becky Anderson's here. Cars Recon. We met Becky um, at a uh, car conference. Uh, Becky and Philip are work for Cars Recon out of, I think it's Franklin, Tennessee, which is near Nashville. And yes, that's right, Becky, I think I got an email from you. I sent out a bunch of emails, and then I've just been working on all the shows and the marketing. But yes, we're going to do a show. I think it's in July. I think it's going to be a Cars on the Move. Yeah, we need to set up a, a meeting time. And um, Cars Recon does, um, 
is a is an in-house service department for the auction so that it's a turnkey auction doesn't have to like look at each other and go man what do we do now how do we fix cars oh we call cars recon that's what we do there we go we're gonna call cars recon that's what we're gonna do 8 15 perfect timing thank you guys so much it was a great live chat i did most of the talking as usual uh do me a favor stick around we're gonna be right back you know the value of a hard day's work because you're out there living it long hours hard days and a dollar that doesn't stretch as far as you'd like. But what if you had more time at home? What if you had more money at the end of the month? Where is it that you're... What if I told you I could help you spend less time on the road while making more money? What if I told you that you could plan your next trip in under two minutes? Both of these things are true with Dispatch Center. Turn the corner with us. Start your next chapter today. Now, there might have been a small glitch in there somewhere. So I want to say this is that uh, we were talking about Central and Super. Well, here's the thing is that this is good information for you. Dispatch Center has uh, so many features and uh, they also have a load board. But on top of that, a CRM as well as, after you deliver the load, a way to get paid. If you're looking for end-to-end -end auto transport software, you want to go to dispatchcenter.com. It's in the live chat. And Mark Grodeke is here as well. And of course, Mark Mark is ringing the cowbell. Uh, nice job, Mark. That ad is great. Um, we got the Ask Larry stuff coming up soon. Really, it, if you have a question, and that maybe uh, I forgot, was it Danny B? Danny, go ahead and ask Mark that same question. I would love that. And um, yes. Yes, this is Tuesday Nights Live. The gang is here, and the, and the answers just keep on coming. So we definitely appreciate it. And Mark, we've been talking about you. I don't know if you heard, heard your Felcher ears burning, but we've been talking about you. So thank you so much. And again, the links are here. Mark is here. And if you've got a question, we have answers. All right, it is time. Let's go into industry news. This is show 195, okay? Auto Transport Intel Tuesday Nights Live. Show 195 in a row, running lane roundtable. Now, we do the roundtables. Uh, it's it's not strictly monthly. We haven't done one in a couple months. In fact, I think I got a, I think I got a picture of that one here. Uh, oh, here we go. The last one we had was Auto Transport Business Networking, April 13th. So it's been two months. But we like to try to pack them in. It's a good-sized group. Not too many folks. Just right. And, you know, I shared that this is from Car Conference. This is some of the Black Widow gang having a party because whether we're whether we're together or online, that's our goal is to network and party. You know, it's a mix, right? Everybody likes to party a little, and we know we have to work a lot, right? So can we mix the two? We do try. And so Black Widow, thank you, from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. There's me and Ty partying and networking, right? <laughs> it's, man, Ty... Um, all right, so and I and I do so then I work hard to share it on social media because is it just marketing? Is it? Because it's interesting, it it looks just like marketing, but then that's networking and then people tuning in and saying, you know what, I like that. That works. We're 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 partying and networking. Maybe this should be episode 195 partying and networking. I, I, and I, you know what? And this was really neat. Ty, I've said it so many times. Now Ty said it the other day when we were having a meeting. OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, services, brokers, carriers, equipment, regulations, and loads. The auto transport industry ecosystem is so big. It is not just moving cars. It is, though. It is, and it's more. And so on these roundtables, we try to look at, we're really talking about most of it. We're mostly talking about used cars. We're mostly talking about carriers. But we're also talking about services, brokers, dealers. We took it to the back of the store, front of the store. Check, check, check. Is it too loud? Okay, good. All right, I think we're good. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, 
back of the store, front of the store, and around around it goes. Because in the back of the store is the transport parking lot, front of the store is where the dealer sells the cars, and on and on it goes. Ooh, hybrid. Digital meets physical. Physical auction, everybody's there, meets digital auction. It's not just the auction. This is where it's interesting, because the comment was made recently. Now that everything's more digital, how do you connect with people in the physical world? Hmm. On Auto Transport Intel. Because when the auction is a packed house, you're going to find Ty in the clubhouse. Connect with Ty at Ty Transport Guy. Connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. Here's some news. Car carriers leave COVID in the rearview mirror. Really? Do tell. I didn't even read the rest of the article. I mean, I kind of did. But I just thought, man, that's just the greatest headline and, and a big ship floating through the ocean. What else do you need? Oh, uh, car carriers are now firing on all cylinders. Oh, and there's another big ship. I think all good marketing has a big ship in it. So there you go. I mean, record rates, record capacity. Um, and this is interesting. Delivering more than just a vehicle. As sales continue to move online... Delivery could be a dealer's only opportunity to make a, a an in-person impression. Really? Really? Let's keep that in mind. Somebody write that down for me. Get your, you got your pen ready? Really? Delivery is when you get to make your first impression. Interesting. Labor, driver, shortages, delay, commercial and military moves. I was reading about this. Like, like 20% of military moves have a hard time finding a carrier there you go there's another one so what was the first one oh uh delivery and then we've got uh military okay okay let's see what else he's got what else do you have here for me uh oh kia's hit hard by delivery delays so just make a note of that i wouldn't write it down just keep it in mind now this is fascinating tesla i love this you can go to the Tesla update page. It's a forum. I don't know. Speculation Live. Nonetheless, this guy says you have to pay first, then literally physically go to the DMV in California, submit your paperwork, but after you pay, it gets put on the rail, goes through the mountain west, KC, then down to West Memphis, Arkansas, then put on a truck and driven to Texas. How does this guy know? <laughs> wow. People, and this is what dealers know. Dealers know their their online car buyers are researching the heck out of this car. They know a lot. So don't don't deliver and just yeah. You know, it was easy peasy or whatever, I don't know. Let's keep moving. Next. Volvo expands uh with a new $118 million investment in EV. Dang. You're just gonna keep reading those headlines. Next. Is a big ship. Was there a big ship on that one? Pretty close. Uh, working with car rental firms, I always look for. You know, this is just random news. Is what we're where we're at now. We're 24 minutes in. We're at total random news. <laughs> um, on business travel news, working with car rental firms, it said download chapter. So I clicked it, and I got a four-page PDF about working with car rental firms and inventory and supply. Did I read it? No, I was busy. But, I've, but I'm sharing it. Christopher Ludwig was on Auto Transport Intel. That was yesterday on a Monday. It was supposed to be Friday, so if you tuned in Friday and nothing happened, we're sorry. Flights changed, but we were able to catch up with Chris yesterday. And thank you so much, Chris. Christopher Ludwig at v Finished Vehicle Logistics. That's Automotive Logistics. Guy is pretty much a celebrity. So it's great to... To have him live on Auto Transport Intel again. And I was able to, Automotive Logistics gave me a 30% ATI discount code to share with you. Now, this show's not over. Today was day one. And, and in fact, if you miss it live, you watch it on demand. So go get signed up. Go to automotivelogistics.media. And you'll see in the events, Finished Vehicle Logistics North America Live. Now, you can use ATI code 30 when you sign up. And, uh, man, their, their list, have you seen? Just go check out. Just see who the speakers are and the agenda. 
it's amazing. Thank you, Automotive Logistics. Do great. Back to here. Do a great job. I didn't even finish my sentence. I got so excited. This was in the... I don't know which session this was, but weight comparisons, gas versus hybrid. There's Because of the weight, the change of the load factor and the weight of the Tesla, two empty spots compared to a Toyota Avalon. That right there. Incredible. Here's more. You want more? Oh, okay. Let's see. With the Rivian RT1, you're going to lose a spot compared to the Jeep Gladiator. And with the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid, you're going to lose a spot as opposed to the regular RAV4. So it, it matters. Newsflash. Size matters. Hey, this is how you get your car shipping news. It really is. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. Put it up on the big screen. Tell your friends. Make some popcorn. Because it is now time. Hey, are you a car shipping guru? Here we go. Get your clocks ready. Your clocks. <laughs> Roughly, how many miles is San Francisco, California from Portland, Maine? 2,100, 2,600, 3,200, 4,500. Hmm. How many miles is San Francisco from Portland, Maine? That's a pretty good question. So we do the answers. Gosh, this is unfortunate. This is awkward. Um, and by the way, go in the live chat. You can play to win. Go to dispatchcenter.com forward slash ask Larry. We reveal the answers on Thursday on Dispatching Live, but we have a special event on Thursday. You want to stay tuned for that information. That's going to be awesome. Um, so you're just going to have to play to win. Look at that. JRW, he's got it. Does he have it? Ooh, Becky disagrees. Awesome. We've got controversy in the live chat. Here we go. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount to ship a 2019 Chevy Traverse from Las Vegas to Lexington? 825, 1070, 1440, 1595. If you're listening on the podcast, you can still play to win. Uh, it's not too late. It's, as long as you listen soon, dispatchcenter.com forward slash ask Larry. That's two questions, three to go. Here we go. The first semi-trailer was invented in 1899 by Alexander Winton, who was a... Was he a car maker, baker, store owner, or painter? Ooh, first semi-trailer. Ooh, that's a good one. Very good. That's, uh, this is Larry. Does you see the Quotify Llama? Hey, Alexa, open Quotify! Uh, that's Larry, the Quotify Llama, and you can do that too. You can yell out to Alexa, open Quotify! <laughs> right now. <laughs> Somebody somewhere's like, Jay, my Alexa's going crazy. So, uh, uh, Larry the Transport Llama, he, he knows his stuff. And so, here we go. Let's get another good one. Here's a good carrier question. Ready? What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount to ship a 2017 Ford F-150 from Wichita to Pittsburgh? 800 945 1325 1530 Again, Larry knows what it takes to get it moved. It may not make you rich, it may not make you poor, but it will get it moved. Right. <laughs> Kimberly unplugged? How dare you? Really? <laughs> she knows me. <laughs> oh, that is so great. Here we go, one more. The first crude electric vehicle was developed in... 1832, 1891, 1903, or 1907. Wow, first first crude electric vehicle. It's probably something crazy, like 1890. No, it can't be. Oh, no, well, those 1900s, that's a long time ago. All right. Wow, none of those are recent, by the way. Did you see that? Amazing stuff. So thank you so much. For playing Are You a Car Shipping Guru, we love this game so much. Great guesses happening in the live chat. Thank you guys so much. Okay, so I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, do me a favor before we go to break. 
because uh, we're going to take our industry news break. Make sure you go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, or tell somebody that needs to, right? Maybe it's not you. Maybe you're good. But maybe you know somebody that ain't so good. And Carrie, I noticed, Carrie, you were talking about, yeah, you want to grow your business. Again, I think it was pre-owned auto logistics. Is that right? And you're a family member and you're helping grow. You might want to go sign up. Maybe. Maybe. Autotransportintel.com forward slash. Well, I don't know the slash. But just go to autotransportintel.com. Oh, thank you so much. It's time. It's, it's, oh, it's 831, right on time. So uh, stick around because we're going to be right back. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. That is the voice of Sue. Yes, she's my co-host on Thursdays on Dispatching Live. She also runs a dispatch office. She's a fully licensed broker. If you're looking for a dispatcher, maybe you're a carrier looking for a dispatcher, she has a dispatch team, and she loves to talk about dispatching, answer your questions, and also on Thursdays, we dive into the mechanics of, man, it's not as easy as it looks. So there in the live chat, you will find email address, phone number, website. Thank you so much, Sue. And I, you know what? Carrie, uh, she's signing up right now. She says she loves this. That's great. We love to hear that because we really do want to help. And uh, and this is, this is the place for that. So thank you so much. So here we go into, now check this out. Bang. Bang! Auto Transport Industry Networking. This is now the second half, usually the second half of industry news, but this is now Auto Transport Industry Networking. So you're looking at your organizational chart, right? I know you're looking, you're looking at your organization and you're thinking, okay, what do we, you know, it's not that big. I, I do it all. Yeah, and here's you. You're the general manager, right? So you're the general manager. You're focused on what you need to do, maybe, right? play along with me maybe but here's the problem uh you got your you're probably you're probably focused on if you're a carrier you're probably pro focused on production and money right loads and money but do not forget your sales department this is the thing this is why we do the round table we know you researched your truck got r d going on but what about sales? Is booking loads from load boards, is that sales? Is that marketing? No, that's production. That's still production. Booking loads off load boards is still production. It has nothing to do with sales, by the way. Speculating a lot. That's what I think. Oh, we're frozen. How are we doing? Check, check. Mike, one, two. Okay, I'm still moving over here. I'm going to keep going. Maybe we had a hiccup. How are we doing? Please let me know in the live chat because it's possible we're frozen. Maybe we have no audio. We're live. We're going to keep going. All right, here we go. So, uh, hey, is this sales and marketing? It is. It's, uh, you know, it's, I don't know, something, but it's sales and marketing. Um, and now that's why I talk about the five steps to networking success, by the way. So, yeah, okay, everything's good. Thank you, Sour. I'm like, because I didn't see anything new. I'm like, we are, we are, fro we are frozen. Okay. All right, thanks, Jay. Um, five steps to networking success. It's a YouTube video I made, and the views, it's, you know, I'm like, maybe it's not a good video. So I went back and watched it. No, I love it. I love this video. Of course, I made it, and I go to trade shows, so I'm biased. And then you go to the trade show, and you see the people talking and meeting and learning and you're like you know what this trade show stuff is amazing 
There's another. Hey, look at that. Look, there's Ship Your Car Now giving another demo, right? There's nothing like it. Yes, I can have a phone call, but there is nothing like being there to get a demo, asking questions, meeting the company. It's almost irreplaceable. That's why I talk. That's why I continue to talk about trade shows. Here's another one. Maria Acuna. She's going to be on next Tuesday night on the uh, Auction Academy training show. And she said something about cryptocurrency. And it was a hush. Whoa. She said cryptocurrency at an automotive trade show? Incredible. It's amazing what information and ideas can do. And there's Ty. There's, <laughs> there's, there's Ty. There's Ty. I'm, this is, I literally took, we were having a conversation. I'm like, hold it. I'm taking your photo because this is awesome. I love what we're doing. We're just talking. We're hanging out. We're chilling. We're having a meeting. We had another, we had, this was in the Black Widow uh, meeting room, the Rain Man suite. Love it. It's, it's amazing. This, this, this is nothing like trade shows. I'm telling you right now. Find out what trade show. Find out what trade show you can actually get to. Find, be thinking about it. Put that. There you go. Here, so we got we got a couple things. Trade show. We got NAAA coming up. IARA coming up. Uh, I think Used Car Week is coming up. Uh, yeah, there are several. Oh, Finished Vehicle Logistics is coming back up. Find out what you can go to because you get to the booths, right? There's people. There's booths. I, oh, I met Auction Edge. You see that? You see that booth back there? See that back there? That's Auction Edge. I got to meet Auction Edge. I literally walked up and I said, you know what? I've heard about Auction Edge. What is it? And he told me. Told me what it is. Gave me more information. And I got it now. I got it. I got it. And if you want to hear more about it, uh, I'll see you in the Super Chat. I'm just kidding. This is Black Widow right this is an installation uh this takes people to put together and once it's up there photos high resolution photos you could be driving so you want a black widow in your bay in your in your service lane or in the auction lane put it in there and just keep driving cars through it you're going to see the video it's all about it then they have to break it all down and you get to get to learn what is what goes into this man this is some crazy stuff how about this uh, or maybe the the CEO gives you a tattoo live at the show but that's okay you keep on going keep on networking I'm sure Martin's thinking what is the oh okay thanks a lot Jay that's great and you get to then hang out in the after parties this is that we were at uh, top golf Las Vegas check that out. Man, what a location. Nothing to see here. Um, yes, and again, everyone, who doesn't love Las Vegas? You gotta love it. And again, there's Ty. We're hanging out. We're having, uh, just me and Ty having another working dinner there at Caesars Palace. Just awesome, man. What a great time. And yet, and then in between, right, there was a GM EV conference. I sat in there. Oh, you like that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, home, public, workplace, fleet, and dealer talking about charging. EV is full of challenges. Then you get on the plane, right? You wave goodbye out the window and you think, man, I cannot wait to do this again. When is the next conference? And you get that notepad out. Five steps to networking success. Who's going, right? Who in your organization is going? Why are you going? Have a purpose, right? It's not just parties not just parties okay what are you saying to people this is man right on have your elevator pitch know what you're gonna say because it could be quick me and ty true story we met a dealer like a gm or a vp at a major rooftop in the elevator we have about 10 seconds i'm like hey what is going on i'm jay auto transport intel it is the car shipping business channel please take my card He's like, I don't have a card. I'm like, that's cool. It's a YouTube channel. We talk to carriers, dealers, brokers, auctions, dispatchers, etc. And the whole point is to help improve auto transport. You got any transport problems? Right? Ty's looking at him. He's like, and the guy's like, yeah, I do. Bang! 
right there. That's it. That's I mean, that's it. And 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 I already I already connected to him on LinkedIn. So make it count. Connect with folks. And then when afterwards, and this is where all those voicemails and notes, when you get back to your office, send emails, follow up, put something on the calendar. Because you, my friend, are now engaging in sales and marketing and you're growing your business and you're not just staring at loads on load boards. I promise you, it is worth it. Let's go to the next slide. All right, like here's Tim. He went to Digital Dealer, that was two weeks ago. He's got six takeaways, right? Talk about the customer and the website and Google My Business, right? Dealer stuff, everybody's got a little bit of different takeaway. But this stuff is, it's really meaningful. And you know what, if you can't make it, just stay in communication. This is what all the brokers and the dealers say, stay in communication, just text me. Let me know what's going on with you, we'll figure it out, we'll catch you on the next one right and then there we go then back on social media more social media and then more social media and the network keeps on growing and now hey man oh my gosh we're doing business this is some craziness right you're not just partying you're not just having fun you're doing business and you are now in sales and marketing and now that you've been doing it yourself you know what this has been working maybe hire somebody to do some sales and marketing do you know somebody that does some sales and marketing? Do you know anybody that likes to talk to people? Talk about your company, your products, your services? That's marketing, man. That's sales. And then, really, if you get really good at it, maybe you start going, hey, these guys are looking for somebody to speak on electrification, charging, autonomous. Maybe I can speak at something. Wow, I'm like an influencer now. What is going on? I, I promised myself I wouldn't go crazy. Last week was Location Services. That was a great show. Locate, Recover, Transport, Remarket. If you missed it, check it out. It was a great show. EV Transport Plugin. We're going to be referencing this stuff. That was a month ago. That was a great show. Auction Academy Training. That's next week. That was a great show. <laughs> Auction Academy Training. That's going to be a great show. That's going to be a great show. And Auto IMS. And, and when we were at car con, that's what's happening now. So we're at car conference, first time ever this has been happening. We're walking around and people are like, hey, we've seen you guys on YouTube. Well, that, man, that almost never used to happen. That was awesome. <laughs> cheers, three cheers. So Tuesday, I'm sorry, Thursday, this Thursday, instead of a dispatching live, we've got NBTA Talks Business Insurance. It's a one hour live special. So if you are here, you know about it, you might want to text somebody. This would be a good time to send that lifeline. Say, oh my gosh, no way. And you can do this. You can go to the, if you go to the homepage, go to the Auto Transport Intel YouTube homepage, one hour. NBTA, it's an interview, it's a panel discussion, it's a special on Auto Transport Intel. Man, to the moon, this is going to be great. Auto Transport Intel, four times a week. Tuesday Nights Live kicks off the week. Yeah, right? Dude, whoa, that's never happened, not at that level. That We are, wow. And you're with us. It's a community. we got so much information to share. That's what we get excited about. It's crazy. DOT Compliance on Wednesdays with Brian Riker. Live chat your questions. Oh, are, are you skipping the scales? Might want to double check that with Brian on Wednesday at noon. How we doing? How'd you load your trailer? Did you just do, did you kind of do a whatever? We can check that. Let's talk about it. Thursday is Dispatching Live. Load board search advice. Dispatching questions. Instead, this Thursday, NBTA Talks Business Insurance. you got to check that. It's going to be a great show. And I'm the host. I'm hosting it. It's happening on Auto Transport Intel, but I'm not going to be talking the whole time. That's a, that a first. Uh, cars on the move. The melting block of ice with Tim and his ice. Because what is a car on a lot? Well, actually, what is a car before it gets to the lot? It's a, it's a block of ice, and it's melting, and it's on your trailer. It's melting. Do you feel it? All right. So this is the Car Should Be Business channel. It's 845. Man, we are right on time. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for saying hello in the live chat, sticking around, and, uh, and making friends.
and, and, and sharing information, please do that. If you got any questions after the show, we would love to. <laughs> There's a... <laughs> You're gonna see. Wait till you see it pop up on the screen here. There's the first. Um, there's the first. Okay, here we go. I'll tell you what. Stick around because right after this, we're gonna be live with Ty. And you're not gonna want to miss it. Is your current vehicle imaging process producing inconsistent images? Frustrating? Time consuming? At the mercy of another vendor's schedule? Well, it doesn't have to be. Black Widow Imaging provides a simple system to capture high quality images of your vehicles in seconds. Simply align the driver's side tire with the floor strike. Stop on the floor plate to scan your vehicle code and capture the exterior images. It's that easy. It's also equipped with an interactive 360 degree interior camera option so your customers don't miss any details. The results are fast, consistent 4K images that are delivered to your website in minutes. Let us show you how easy your imaging process can be anywhere in the global supply chain. Visit blackwidowimaging.com to schedule a live demo. Black Widow. You, you, okay, so here's what you want to do, really. Go to the website, blackwidowimaging.com. There's also an email and there's a phone number. And what you want to do is go find out more about Black Widow. If you're a carrier, think about how what, what could happen if the high-resolution images for the dealer from the auction, if those were being captured and sent quickly, right? How could that interact with your vehicle inspection? If you're a dealer or an auction, you need one of these. You need to get a demo right now. Really, and, I, and we encourage anybody. And the thing is, oh, and here's Ty. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll let Ty finish that sentence for me. Okay, oh, he's getting, still getting set up. I think he's in the, I think he's, he's just down the hallway. So you can hear the footsteps. He's walking down the hall. It's just like Vegas. He's either on an escalator or a stairway. He's in line outside a restaurant. I don't know what it is, but ladies and gentlemen, oh, here we go. I got a drum roll in here. I've got to do this. Does it sound like a drum roll? <laughs> no. No. It doesn't. <laughs> I'm here. I've been here. It okay. sounds like it sounds like one to me. Yeah, to you. <laughs> Party one. That was good. Dude, wow. Wow. Wow, I was right. That was wow. great info. Thanks, Highway. Man. Uh, great trip. And so as you're doing this, I'm sitting here, I'm like, okay, I'm just a carrier guy. I'm not sure how much it even costs to get into a conference, and I don't probably have the time to get into the conference. So what Jay's saying, though, here's <clears throat> what he's saying. Conferences are amazing, and, and the networking that, that takes place there is is unreal. If you if you really honestly go there for the networking, there's so much opportunity. And and to see people, and Jay's right, you know, we're walking around, people like, hey, are you, yeah, yeah, we are. So um, the, take, the takeaway is you can do networking where you live, right? And that's, that's kind of the approach I always take on a, on a, on a real practical, low-budget level is we would love for you to come to the conference because, you, I mean, you really do meet people and they really do want to know what you're doing. And there is opportunity to possibly do business together, just like Jay's saying that. That's what happens for us when we go to conferences. We start doing business with people. So my approach is on a smaller scale, <clears throat> start where you live and start talking to people that may know somebody in the car business, any part of the car business. You know, do you fix windshields? Do you change tires? Do you do the oil? Do you do PDR, paintless dent repair? Talk to anybody that you know that might have something to do with a car and work your way into the dealership. Okay, well, what dealership? If big Ford store that's scary, maybe not. Maybe start at the local used car lot guy, right? I know Bob, and Bob told me that you sell cars, and I transport cars. Where do you buy your cars? So these are some of the things we talk about. But Jay's, I, I think Jay's absolutely right. Sales is, <clears throat> you know, I'm excited about tonight's show because we got Joe on, and Joe is just, I mean, dude is lethal 
<laughs> the amount, and Paul as well. So both of these guys, well, Joe's going to bring a great presentation tonight. I'm really excited about it uh, because it talks about the things that I know. I know they're important. That's part of our business, maintenance, cost of maintenance, those, those things that happen. We've got some people on the show tonight. One in particular has got a maintenance issue. I'm sure we'll hear about it. Carlos, our buddy Carlos. So I, I can talk about maintenance. I can talk about trucks. I can talk about insurance. I can talk about the DOT. Those aren't necessarily the things I'm interested in. I know they're important. They're an important part of my business. But if I don't have something to do, I'm a transport guy. I'm, I move cars. And this is a great segue, by the way. Jay wanted me to share this story with you. But there's, uh, <clears throat> I got a phone call. Somebody found the channel, ATI. They found an ad. This guy wants to sell his transport business. Now, where I'm going with this is <clears throat> if you want to own a transport company, you want to be a transport company. I thought, let's reverse engineer this. Let's fast forward 20 years. You've made a lot of money. You've done really well. Now you're going to sell your business. What are you selling? A truck, a trailer, and what? Do you have a client base? So we start talking about blue sky. And so the approach that I take is, is I want to own my own customer. I want to build my own lane and I want to dominate. <clears throat> How does that happen? Well, it starts with the car dealer, in my opinion. And where does the car dealer get his cars? We don't know. That's changing. Traditionally, it was at an auction, right? So we don't know where they're getting them now. Some people are saying they're buying them out of driveways. Paul Machine, he'll talk about that. And uh, as a matter of fact, another cool story, this really happened this week. An old dealer buddy of mine called, hey, Ty, I have two out in somewhere, Kansas, maybe an hour and a half, two hours away, two. Can you go get them? No, I don't know anybody can go get them, and I don't know anybody that would go get them. Oh, man, how come? What can we do? Have you thought of a two-car rollback? <laughs> this is a car dealer. He hadn't thought of that. So... Point being is, is we become, the more we know about the business, the more we try to help our customer, who's our customer, car dealer, hopefully, an auction, hopefully, those are your customers, and maybe a broker, a decent broker. But as a whole, if you want to own your own business, start planning like, I want to sell this. How, do you, how are you going to get out of this? Or are you ever going to, are you going to hand it off to your son or your daughter? We don't know. But <clears throat> build the business to leave the business. Have you ever heard of that? That's a real book. <laughs> I'm really ready. So um, I'm excited tonight. The round table is always a great time because we get to see the people that we talk to. We get to see their face. We get to hear their voice. We get to hear what's going great, what's not going so good. And these are, <clears throat> Jay and I, you know, he kept talking about some of the things we talked about. And mostly what you'll, if you ever are a fly on the wall and you hear us talking, mostly what you're going to hear us talk about is you. Maybe not your name, but we do have a lot of names. But we're talking about you because you are our community and you are the people that we appreciate, if that makes any sense. So, and yeah. we're reaching folks that are now like, you know, I like what you guys are saying, but I don't know how to explain it to the people I work with. <laughs> like, how weird is that? Because yeah. this is kind of mm -hmm. new. Yeah, it is new. It's there's a, a lot, and there's a lot of information, you know. And I, I may have said this the last time I was on one of the shows, but I don't remember exactly. It was the Black Widow show, so I got to be a part of that from the start to the actual show. And <clears throat> as you're watching this, like tonight's just a roundtable. There's actually work that goes into the roundtable, but the work, be I mean, the roundtable is great, and there's a work, but what Jay has to do to put these shows together is crazy. <laughs> I mean, it really is crazy. So there's a lot of energy and a lot of effort that goes into it. And it's really good because it's it's information. It's companies. It's it's drivers, carriers. It's uh, dealers, used car, new car, OEM. I mean, Christopher Ludwig, that guy. Oh, man. I wow. I mean, I really, I could just sit there and listen to this guy. It's so, neat. You know what's neat? We talked to him yesterday and we had that great show. So he was live today, all day long, with like international OEM reps and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, wow. Well, that's a gift. Yeah, it is a gift. Yeah. So it's it's these relationships, and you know, you hear us talk about, uh, I heard Jay say, 
you know, what's auction edge? Well, what does that have to do with me? I just need to know, do I need a three car or four car? Well, it's, you're going to run into it. You just don't realize it. when you go to an auction, you're going to run into auction edge. That's how you get a gate pass. That's how you, they decide that you can take the car or you can't take the car. There's a lot that goes into this behind the scenes. When we pull up, we just, we just want to get our car and leave. Well, there's all and these. That's kind of, why so many folks in other verticals get worn out because they're like, can you learn something about our side of the business? Right. How about, how about the guy? How about, how about the guy? I didn't say his name. How about the guy we met in the elevator? That's a dealer. Oh yeah. Does he love carriers? <clears throat> <clears throat> no. Does nope. he need them? <laughs> yes. So what does he do? Can he talk about it? I don't even think he can talk about it. It's no. like a hostage. Yeah. It's a hostage it, situation. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the 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 connection here. What Jay was started out that little segment with. You know, here's you're the general manager. Here's production. Here's equipment. You know, here's this and this and back to the sales part. Um, you know, that's why Jay has DOT Wednesday with Dave. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Brian. Brian, yeah. yeah. Right. So that's just crazy. And how yeah. we doing now? How we do it? Because there's, we've needed a phrase for this. And that the phrase is how we doing. And how we doing means, hey, are you going to flip that trailer? <laughs> <laughs> because my cars are on the top. Yeah. Right. It's uh, very yeah. possible. So yeah. anyway, great trip. Uh, the takeaway, in my opinion, Jake, <clears throat> give your takeaway. But yeah, we would love to have you come to conference. I mean, we, we even talked about uh, we get to meet Bobbitt. I mean, those people are pretty Bobbitt amazing. Business I didn't media. realize. Yeah. yeah very friendly, awesome. very open, very, yeah. you know, engaging people. They they put the conference on. <clears throat> yes. And, uh, you know, we go to these conferences, we hear these things and, and you know, we, we go back and we start taking notes, comparing notes. And it's like, man, wouldn't it be cool if we had a ATI conference someday where we talk about the stuff we talk about every Tuesday night. So <laughs> yeah, I'm taking that. Uh, See, now that's what's on my secret notepad. What could we do? What do we need to do? It's not yet. No, don't, don't book your flight we're just yet. yet. No, not. gosh, no, we got a lot. We have a lot. We probably have another 195 live shows to do. Yeah, for but sure. We'll get there. Show 400. Well, maybe we'll, maybe, maybe somebody will invite us to do a session or something. Maybe that, that'd be a good start. We got some cool stuff. So I'll tell you what. All right. We got Joe in the waiting room. Let's bring him in. Let's go to camera one for a second. Now let's go to the live chat. And uh, Joe is getting situated. Paul, do me a favor. Just hang out in the waiting room for a few um, get you a Danish. I think we got some almonds. And here we go. We've got Joe Bercari, Midwestern Car Carriers. Joe, can you see us and hear us okay? I see you. Hey, I, I grew up in New York City. So for me, the phrase, how you doing, has a totally different <laughs> meaning than what most people anticipate. <laughs> oh, how man. You, you know, it's funny. Because there's actually a thing, right? When you brand something, you have to think of the other like uh, interpretations. And I did what I, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I believe <laughs> that's true. Is that going to be a problem? Yeah, <laughs> we do it. You can you, you can ask some folks from the old country with fouls. That is so. I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna I'm probably gonna find out at our live show one day, <laughs> and I won't be doing so well. If there's a brick that flies through your front window with a, a note taped to it that says, how you doing? How you do oh, oh. <laughs> how you doing? Joe, man, it's so good to see you. Are you such an awesome guy? We appreciate you coming. How, how's it going in your world? Uh, we're on the top of the wave right now. Uh, you know, a lot of the manufacturers are starting to get their hands around the, um, around the shortages. So we're starting to kind of see the, 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 the wave crest and uh, business is, is starting to pick up. I, I would say it's, I mean, you know, typically so, spring, summer, and a fall are, are the busy seasons in, in uh, new vehicle OEM uh, uh, business. So it's probably we're starting to get to that spot. I don't, I don't think we're quite to 100%, you know, where we would normally be in, you know, normal times, whatever those are. But we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. 
Well, it's funny you say that. We ran into a couple of carriers and two uh, at the conference started sharing some concerns with Q4. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and I so that's that's a lot of, of that. And actually, it's not the same uh, parts shortages that um, that are, are really driving that. There are some other shortages too. Uh, rubber, uh, virgin rubber, they call it. There's a potentially a shortage involved with that. And uh, we're already starting to feel a bit of a crunch on capacity for truck tires, in particular, the less than common sizes of tires that uh, newer car carriers run, you know, because we, we have to be lower and squatter than most everything else on the road. So, uh, and then we're also seeing uh, uh, OEM part shortages uh, for our big trucks. So uh, things that would normally be a uh, sort of just national stock, you know, air dryers and, and that kind of thing are, are starting to have some substantial delays. And so that, in, you know, that's forcing companies you know, we're turning drivers slower as they go into uh, you know, into the shop, and and really, I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see the business, ca- you know, kind of adjust because it puts such a huge emphasis on what I'll call proper preventive maintenance to try and minimize that emergency repair. Because now it's not just about that. Oh, my truck's going to be down for a day, and you're at the mercy of a shop that really doesn't give a hoot about your schedule, but now there's like legit, I don't know when I can get you this part because I, you know, whatever, name the name the manufacturer, whether, you know, Volvo, Packard, Freight, or any of I come and say, I, sorry guys, I just can't get you that turbo, you know, stuff that would be relatively routine otherwise. So, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's definitely some things. Well, it was funny because they, they led me to believe they were concerned about Q4 because every chip would be landed put where it's supposed to go and then the oem the manufacturer is going to say why haven't you guys already moved all these <laughs> well <laughs> it, it that let me just say that I, I i look forward to having that problem let's just say that and i'm sure anybody that's on my side of the business is going to say the same thing uh you know let us let us you know please please for the love of all that's holy let us sink our teeth into that problem and show you what we can do uh, I mean, there are no, no doubt there are going to be challenges. Driver, you know, uh, there's a driver shortage for real, and uh, no doubt there are going to be the you know capacity challenges in terms of the available equipment and, and stuff like that. But you know, this is this this industry has historically been able to overcome that sort of stuff. You know, we've always seemed to find a way to to be able to move the metal and and get it to the dealerships. And I, I'm pretty confident that, that you know this this year is not going to be any different, especially with pent up demand. And once the you know once the the sales are really, you know, taken off, and I, I really look forward to hearing Paul's uh, information. You know, like he he on the EV show, he kind of blew my mind. Our owners just were really over the moon with the data that he shared, and so I'm looking forward to hearing him validate some of this stuff. But uh, you know, I, I think that the industry will be fine. We'll get through this. I, I am much more concerned about more material problems in Q4. Uh, going into a winter when you know the, the the supply chain for mundane things, parts, tires, things, like, when that gets constrained because everything is slowing down, and in, and again, if there are indeed uh, uh, core part shortages like like rubber, um, plastics, things like that, then that that would be a pretty big impact to us. Uh, that's great, <clears throat> good information for sure. Jay, what is this guy? Is Paul supposed to be coming in right so now? Or? Before Paul comes in, now Joe, do you want to? You want to share your screen? Is there anything you want to do before Paul gets here? Yeah, let me do. Let me just say this. Uh, you know, I, I I wanted to say hello. I haven't done this the uh, the last time that I've been on here, but I know there are some Midwestern car key, uh, car carriers folks that are watching. So I wanted to just say hi and thanks for supporting the company and the channel and all that. And uh, one of them I know for for a fact is uh, Rachel, who was on your Women in Car Hauling uh, panel. Uh, so hi, Rachel. I saw her today, and uh, and thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of our team. Uh, now, how do I share? That's right. Thank you, <clears throat> Rachel. Um, now I should have. Yep. Screen sharing is on. You should be able to take the wheel. Let me know if you need any help. I think I almost got it. Cool. Say, so, I think I almost got it. What I mean by that is I may may not have it. We'll find <laughs> out. All right. Well, we're used to that. That's right. Or, That's the way car roll, car haulers roll right there. That's right. I think yeah, I got it. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Uh, so you should see my uh, my my screen yes. here. Fundamentals of cost. We good to go? 
Yes. Okay, so, uh, you know, when I was invited to the channel tonight, the, the question that was asked is, you know, is to be part of a round table to talk to folks, some who may be new to the business, some who may, who may have been seasoned in the business. And so the first thing that always comes up to my mind is, you know, if you get involved in a, in a, in a company uh, in this business, do you understand your costs? Because with, you know, that far and away more than anything else is going to influence your success uh, within this business. If you just live your life, you know, sticking your finger in the air and hoping that, uh, that you get it right, then uh, it's some, something eventually is going to bite you. And so to start with that, uh, understanding what your costs are, uh, you have to, to really start breaking it down. And in traditional business uses direct and indirect costs as your, your key uh, factors. And your direct costs are the things that are tied direct, directly to the service that you perform. In this case, you know, you cannot haul cars without drivers. You cannot move trucks without fuel. You need tires on those trucks. Your trucks require maintenance. Uh, sometimes you're going to need lodging, whether you're in a sleeper or not. Eventually, you're going to need some kind of lodging. And then the, the, the cost of claims. Uh, we, we love to live in a perfect world where there is no damage, but claims are a real thing. And uh, then, of course, your indirect costs. These are the costs that are going to happen whether you haul one or one million cars in a particular time period. And that would be property to park your equipment on. The equipment that you are renting, leasing, financing, using, uh, actually hauling the cars with. Uh, any insurances that are related to this. Insurance could be its own topic. I know you have a, a great guest who is extremely knowledgeable uh, on, on this uh, particular subject. You know, this is a very complicated issue and, and I understand this much of it, but I know enough to know that I need a lot of help to get through that subject. Taxes, permits and licensing. You, you almost have to have an MBA in government uh, mechanics to understand how some of these, uh, these relationships work, but it's critical. Uh, to understanding, you know, this is a, a regulated industry and it is very important to understand how these things work. Uh, your office and your back end, this could mean dispatch. This could, you might outsource your dispatch, but if you do that, you're paying for it one way or another, either in the form of a lesser rate from a, a brokerage or in the form of a salary for someone who's scouring load boards and trying to find new information. Uh, and then, of course, technology, everything is EPOD and paperless logs and all that. And that's a real part of our life now where uh, you know, we're, we're, we're gone with paper, but now you have to have, you're, you're practically mandated to have at least a cellular subscription, probably a tablet, you know, probably all, you know, all kinds of other technologies. Most drivers are going to, you know, especially independents are going to have uh, uh, laptops and things like that in the truck with them. And then of course, professional services, you know, Ask any owner operator who their favorite person in the world is aside from their spouse and they'll say they're CPA. You know, uh, in some cases you're going to be needing people who do collections. In some cases you're going to need legal guidance. Those professional services typically do not come cheap, but they are invaluable to the business. I know I talk to our general, general counsel at least twice a week on various subjects related to a number of things. So uh, this is a real cost that you have to be ready for. And in order for you to understand how to assemble this, you go to math. You know, we take, uh, and, and these are just some very, very simple formulas that I've thrown together. They, they're sort of oversimplified things that I've used over the years. How do you figure out how much fuel you're going to burn? Uh, how do you figure out how much cost uh, you're going to use in indirect uh, payroll and tires and so on? And uh, I see a, I messed up my figure already. Uh, but at the end of the day, it boils down to an amount of revenue that you have to generate. And, and you can pick a target, whether it's day, week, month, whatever, that is your break even. And uh, when you get above that target, then every 30 cents, uh, excuse me, 30 cents of every dollar that you earn, you basically get to put into your pocket. So that, so in other words, if my break even is $1,000 a day and I earn $1,001 I've made my first 30 cents worth of margin at that moment. And then of course it compounds as you go. Conversely, every dollar you fall short because of the relationship of direct and indirect cost is actually going to be around 50 cents of every dollar that you accumulate. And the reason why that is a big deal is because it is way easier to go backwards than it is for you to go forwards. It takes a lot more to earn the profit than it does to lose the coin. Say that again, Joe. That was good. It takes a lot more effort to lose the money than to make it. 
uh, excuse me, a lot, lot more effort to make the money. I got it backwards. See, now I'm doing it. <laughs> and, and so what I've done, and again, what's worked for me over the years is I put together a, a pro forma. Again, this is an extremely, I know some of these numbers are probably not uh, really accurate. It's roughly uh, competitive to a, uh, an 80 foot stinger style car carrier with a head rack. But just to give you an idea, uh, you know, you would think $25,000 in revenue for a month is a pretty good amount of, of monthly revenue. But when you take it against some semi-realistic costs, you know, your profit margin ends up being 90 bucks, 0.4% uh, profit margin on the revenue that you generate. And so once again, uh, if you are, are under that 24,909 break even cost uh, figure that I've put up here, then every dollar less than that 24,909 is essentially 50 cents of negative margin. That's cash out of your pocket. Um, so in this particular case, using the mileage, which I just use as an absolute swag, using the revenue against that mileage, and then the, the general guidelines of what you're going to use for, uh, for direct and indirect cost. I'm saying that if you were trying to run this business on a pro forma, you would probably have made a mistake on your pricing or you made a mistake on your projections. Um, but I'll tell you, one of the things that new business owners often do is they completely overestimate their ability to be able to keep going. And for example, uh, a lot of a lot of folks sit there and say, well, I'll just work my butt off for the next for the next 36 months and it won't be a problem. I'll build enough of a nest egg that I'll be able to sort of cruise through. That doesn't work that way. You have time off. You have vacations. You have people who care about you that want to see your face. You know, people, you you get tired, you get sick. You know, the, there are a lot of things that happen that can disrupt your ability to work. And so it's not a good assumption to sit there and say, well, 31 day month, 24 potential working days, including Saturday, I'll work all 24 of them and it'll be fine. Not the way that's going to work. Uh, then of course you get into other, other things that will just delay your productivity on a given day, whether it's a shorter month or whether it's shorter hours of daylight during the day, winter weather that makes your productivity a lot slower, or if you have personal illness, that is a really big factor in you know, over, overestimating your, abil uh, uh, your ability to earn or underestimating the true cost of doing the business. On top of that, this doesn't really go into, let's say, you know, something horrible happens where you blow an engine or you have to replace uh, two, two axles on the back of your truck or you have a truck fire or something like that. These things could not be, you know, these could be 100% not preventable. Things happen out on the road that these crazy X factors take place all the time, but it'll kill you if your truck is down while you're waiting for the insurance adjusters to get all their information together. Man, the rest of those costs continue, especially, you know, especially the, the equipment costs, you know, all those, those indirect costs, they continue. So uh, it can really be a significant cash crunch if you do not price your business correctly or estimate your costs correctly. Um, and then on top of that, I always say, you know, expenses never go down. Uh, this is on, you know, everybody can relate to this. The cost always goes up. And if it stays flat, call it a win. Uh, extremely rare. I mean, I think we saw fuel prices dip down after a certain point in time, but it's fair to say that they were extremely uh, inflated at the time uh, that they went up. So uh, really things have a tendency to stay normal. And then there's usually a moderate amount of inflation or just general cost of living increases as the cost of doing business to, you know, tends to sort of, uh, of increase over time. You usually want to have a three-year plan. Uh, if you can look this far, you can go to a five-year plan. We'll talk a little bit in a second about the problem with a three and a five-year plan. But uh, if, the, if things stay flat, that's a win. If things increase, be ready for it. Either have the relationships in place or have more earning power or pricing increases locked and loaded so that that way you know that you're going to be able to sustain the business. And then finally, uh, I, I just would say, you know, the, the final thoughts on what do we learn from this? Number one, you can't fight rates. Someone, one of my favorite people told me that and it's always stuck with me. If you're on the brokerage side, if you bid on business, whether it's uh, uh, OEM business, auction business, et cetera, 
understand the costs that the service providers that you work with have so that that way you can price the business appropriately. I don't want you to lose your butt on a particular truckload, but I want you to make sure that you get your piece and the carrier gets theirs because that is a key to long, uh, long sustainability. And on the hauling side, align yourself with companies of integrity who understand what your costs are, whom you can have honest relationships with about how your costs work so that that way they can tell you what's realistic and what is not and try and help you through. If you find yourself in a situation with a company that likes to buy business, and we all know examples of this from the past, then you know that things, uh, that, you, know, you start going into, uh, into what I call unholy decision land. Cash is king. I know uh, Ty has talked about this. You can have a nest egg, but cash flow is the thing that will keep your business turning. Without cash flow to manage those daily expenses, you're in deep, deep trouble. Because a lot of times, you're either factoring to get at a seven day pay or sooner, or you're gonna be waiting between 30 or in some cases 45 and 60 days for your, uh, for your customer to, tr to pay you your receivable. You have to have the financial strength to survive that. There are three things in my mind that will kill an enterprise. Undisciplined growth, which is just buy all the business you can and then suddenly wonder, oh, I'll make it up in volume. You never make it up in volume, newsflash. Number two, market depression. People who have not been disciplined in their pricing usually get crushed under the depressed market because suddenly the volume they thought they were gonna make it up for is gone. And then unexpected events, like a pandemic that shuts down the country for eight or so months, I would say is a substantial killer of enterprises. And you should be responsible to govern your business accordingly. Always be reasonable and realistic in your assumptions, even if it seems like bad news. We walk a very fine line in this business of trying to take advantage of the market, but still you know, try and play the downward pricing pressure from the manufacturers and customers so that that way we can keep ourselves in business and keep that cash flowing. And then last thing I'm gonna say is a great quote that I learned from a guy about that told me, uh, he worked for Ford, he told me that, you know, if you have a choice to make a million dollars making pencils or a million or or a thousand dollars making rocket ships, build the pencils. What does that mean? That means go where the money is. Maybe I like the lane from Kansas City to Detroit, but if the money is going to Iowa, I'm going to Iowa. And the other thing is you got to be really be flexible and embrace change. This business is mercurial by its nature. It changes all the time. It has changed a million times since I started 24 years ago, and it is going to continue changing. We are seeing right now, and, and again, I'm going to go back to Paul. I'm worshiping on the altar of Paul because he can tell uh, some incredible stories about how our business is going to change in a very, very short period of time. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Machine, can you see us and hear us okay, Paul? Please say hello. Can you, can you hear me all right? Yes, we hear you. We see you. Super, super. You guys yeah, look no, I, in Vegas, man. Look good in Vegas. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, how are you, Paul? I'm good, Ty. How you doing, sir? Good. I wanted to flip back to joe just for a second joe do you want to tap on that three or five year thing why that may or may not be a good idea that was great information by the way very i mean it's like okay round table's done bye <laughs> well i know right that was you know, awesome we we try and put together a three-year plan uh at, at midwestern and um the, uh, the idea there is, is that we're trying to protect the enterprise. We're trying, you know, there are a lot of people who have substantial investments in the organization. And so you want to try and think of every possible angle that you can so that that way you've got a good, stable platform to stay with. And three years is a pretty good time horizon. If you can get to five, that's also pretty lovely. But most contract lengths with OEMs, yeah, they're, they're going to be between 48 and 36 months. Sometimes you can get to a five-year contract if things are, you know, you know, things fall in exactly the right way. But so three years is really a good benchmark. But the thing of it is that every year you want to adjust your three-year plan because I guarantee you, assumption that you, an assumption you made 11 months ago, is now wrong. 
you know, that whether it's because the market is hotter up north than it was down south or, you know, the, the projections have changed or there are new products on the market which are changing your load factor, changing the way that you do business, pushing your freight distribution patterns in different directions. Maybe now there's a lane that you currently enjoy that you didn't have before, you know, and so your business growth is dependent upon trying to stabilize those types of things. And so that's why I say, you know, you go to a five-year plan, you know, you can't just fix it and forget it and say, well, I'm good for five years. That is not going to work. You know, three, three years is a good estimate, but every year you need to re rethink things because I promise you something is different. Good. Thank you. And that was I'm good information. Say, this is, we have never had a round table quite like this. You can, you can, anybody who's been to a round table before, this is the next level round table. <laughs> so, wow. um, so I'm going to, I'm going to hand the reins over to Wait, Paul. Hold yeah, on one I'm, second. I'm going to hand it back to Ty. Okay. Yeah. Give it back to me because yeah. I'm going to tell you something. You, you didn't hear Joe say you can get rich hauling cars. I didn't hear Joe say that. Did I? Did anybody hear that? No, you won't hear me say that. Yeah, it's it's a, a tricky business, right? It, it requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of guile. And uh, you really have to have a passion for it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, back to you, Jay. <laughs> no, it's back to... Okay, so <laughs> that, was, that was really... I mean, I like the way you just did that. Because that... Yes. That's the big problem. And I, I put the stack of money away because it's Tuesday Night's Live. But I, it, you, listen, here's a secret, everybody. Camera one. Uh, Ty knows. Uh, it really bugs me now how much is out there about getting rich and got to get that money. And it, it makes me crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tough game. You can get hurt financially emotionally spiritually family i mean it's uh it's tough business and anybody just listen to joe you know he's been in it for a long time <clears throat> he's dropping down some incredible knowledge that it's real important so we're going to move on uh, I'm, I'm really excited to hear paul thank you paul for coming yeah i just gotta say joe you're a fellow sob <laughs> not like it means not like it means for business yeah Right. When you become a student of the business, you never stop learning. You know, Jay and I were poking fun of at PPP. Proper planning prevents poor performance, always. And that's exactly what you just described. You laid it out flat for them. It's a. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I love what I get to do. I get to be able to share that. You know, being an SOB, the, the second thing you got to do is you got to share it. Because yeah, just keep it all to yourself, it doesn't do anything. So I love I love the the way you sh you shared your your expertise and your knowledge there. Thanks. All right, can you guys see the big screen? Great. Yes. Got it. Super, super, super. So I figured I'd start with uh, we'll review the current and upcoming inventory for the electric vehicles. Now, bear in mind as we go through this, we took I decided to use a small slice of the of the um, industry for electric vehicles to make it easier to digest. Uh, but what I realized is that the percentages were pretty much in line with the overall industry, uh, non-EV as well as EV. So it was kind of surprising. Uh, so let's, this, these are our subcompact electric vehicle existing units. I can't say the name of the units that are in the, in, in the marketplace because um, we're actually doing a study on this right now. But this gives you an idea for one segment of subcompact compact electric vehicles in the top states. California, Texas, Michigan. I was surprised to see Massachusetts as an example, uh, as a top state uh, for, for electric vehicles that that's uh, in 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 distribution that are actually in those markets. And when you look at the the EV portfolio of the subcompact and the compact by segment and by year, you'll notice that uh, you know the the segments, the LT trim level or the not not the base level. Um, the middle level of the of the four doors tend to be the most populous, which also branches out to all the others that are out there. It's the no one really wants the base. It's just a maybe fifteen hundred dollars more just to get the middle package. So look at the difference between you know a, a middle package versus the premier package, uh, and then you go to you start looking for the base. Look at the base. You know, not a lot of people are buying base base vehicles. They're 
they're, they're ramping up, they're stepping up. But here's the concern when you talk about the electric vehicle portfolio in one small segment, at one in one OEM, there's 53% of what's available in distribution is 2020 models. You notice that? You see that, guys? And you see what's 2017, what's left? What's 2018, what's left? 2019, what's left? And then looking forward, 2024, what's left? What we are experiencing is grounding dealers are holding on to every lease or fleet vehicle that gets dropped off to them. With the exception of the higher mileage, edgier units with bad vehicle history reports. They're sending those to the lane. They're sending those to the auction. And to their surprise, they're ringing the bell. They're still ringing the bell with those vehicles because the supply of available used inventory is not as, it's not where it needs to be to match the demand that's in the marketplace. That's on the EV side as well as the general, general side. Maturity volume. What do we expect to return in this particular segment? By, I'm sorry, let me back up. By year, by year. Um, and you know, I, I love to talk about the uh, supply and demand in, in, in my weekly blogs. You see right here, January 2023, we're going to have a spike. But then what happens to the rest of the rest of the months in January? Let's go into 2022. Oh boy. We got a low volume of return inventory levels of this subcompact um, compact category within this one particular segment. But those numbers are consistent across the board. So just multiply by all the other subcompact electric vehicle markets that, that are out there. So what does that mean if you're if you're uh, um, in logistics and transportation? Your demand for your services is going to go through the roof. Going to go through the roof, right? And the reason why. By state, when you look at it by state, the average re, average days to turn, which means by the time I get the vehicle on my lot and I can flip it to a customer, we just broke 32 days. I have never seen a national average in my 30 years of doing this where the entire country is below 32 days turning a vehicle from wholesale to deliver it in someone's driveway. It's never happened before. So the only oh. way, yeah. Paul, is this analogous to the new vehicle uh, uh, sort of uh, inventory supply metric where, you know, I, I've read a lot about how like pickup supplies for the various domestics tends to hover somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh, 30 to 45 days. And they still in the crunch when they're down in the, the 20 day period and, you know, 15 days is nuclear Armageddon, six days is I've got more more uh, you know, too much product floating around. Is that sort of the same here? Yes, so if you really think about the new car supply, I call that the used car factory, right? So every yeah. every new vehicle that's being produced this year is our zero to two year old models for 2022, 2023 and 2024. Every vehicle that was sold during the pandemic is our zero right now. Uh, and that they're already gone uh, and then you got the two-year-old is going to 2022 to 2023. I have a one particular OE has told me, how will you assess the market valuation for my 2018 XXX or in 2019 XXX? Because I got nothing going through the lane. The grounding dealer has kept every single return vehicle. And they're buying, and they're, they're going, right now they're looking eight months early. So you're eight months away if you're in a 36 month lease, they're calling you at 25 months to try to work you to get you in today because they want your inventory. So that's a car that's not making it to the line. So understanding the availability of, of by state, you talked about the lane. I love how you guys identified the lane. This kind of information would help you understand where you need to focus your energy to get more, more possible inventories. Because if you're in this, if you're in, uh, you're in Washington, that little yellow line right here, 25, and you're, you know, and if you're hooked on that pencil, I mean, on that rocket ship, you're, you're missing out on the pencil in California, right? So you got to go where the money's at. And, and we see there are pockets across the country where there's money. Um, so one of the more populate, popular uh, subcompact lease vehicles um, that's been in the affordable range. What I mean by affordable, sub $30,000, because these are big push by, by government to go, everyone on electric, everyone's going to buy an electric car. But the reality is that it's unaffordable for most people, for most people. So 
we, I wanted to target, we took a look at what was affordable. So there's between 700 and 900 Leafs, Nissan Leafs, that are coming off a of lease, coming into the wholesale market every single month. Now let's take a look. Um, one in 20, <laughs> first month of 2022, second is February, March, April, May, and then going into 2023, you see the, the trend here. There's, I mean, and then a national, you think national, seven to 900 subcompact electric lease. What's gonna happen if there's a, a, an instant demand, a run on all electric vehicles? They're gonna be gone. There's not, that's not, there's not enough there to meet the demand. So there's gotta be other ways to be able to source that. So we, thinking about this on the retail side of things, we, did, we dove into what's the wholesale market look like now, right? Where are these electric vehicles being run, right? So elect, very few electric vehicles are running through the physical auctions today in total. Not a whole lot when you compare those. And you probably see that, Ty, and hear that when you're in the lanes. Uh, yeah. And you probably you don't. know that yourself, Joe, from, from a, you know, the booking and knowing what's going on the, on the carriers. What we did find is that most electric vehicles are sold in private party to private party marketplace. Someone who knows someone who has an electric vehicle, raise their hand and say, I want to buy it. They're also clickish. Uh, like if, you're, if you had a Hummer back in the, back, you know, 10 years ago, you were in a Hummer group, right? If you had a Subaru, you're, you're, you're clickish. You're, you know a lot of other people that have Subarus and you're, you're hoping that one day when that car's 20 years old, you might be able to buy it for your kid, right? That's a click. In the last two months, I've put together three new startups. I've helped three new startups, let me put it together, that are developing private party to private party exclusive membership-based marketplaces for the electric vehicle or battery electric vehicle market. So what does that mean again, if you're in the transportation logistics industry, you got one, maybe two vehicles that need to be point A to point B being delivered. So that flexibility, you have to be able to pivot. Change is coming, right? It's the, the, the way we used to operate for the last 100 years is going to be totally different for the next 100 years. And the analogy, I love how you use the analogy because I talk about riding the surfboard all the time. Early adopters will be on the top of the wave. The ones who don't do anything or in front of the wave because they didn't think about doing the work to get out and, and try to catch it. And the people who wait to see what the early adopters do are behind the wave and they can't catch up. So get on the wave, right? Get the board and get on the wave. Now, uh, let's talk about the retail supply and demand for bat battery electric vehicles. Franchise dealers are the ones who have most of the Nissan Leafs, Leafs nationwide. Let me set the background. We watch 40,000 plus new car and, frank and, and independent dealership websites every single day. We're, we're scanning for VINs we've never seen before, how that vehicle was described, how it was equipped, price changes, all the metrics that go along with it goes into our, da our data bank. So this is how I can say most of those Nissan Leafs that we are tracking in the marketplace, compared to the DMV records, are being sold by franchise dealers because they're going to the auction and buying them. Many subcompact and compact EVs that are not listed these are the percent of the de dealerships franchise across the country that are two to four year old vehicles. And you could see, look at Arizona, 84.4% are private party sales, mm. right? So if you're, if you're a hauler and you want to take advantage of, and you live in Arizona, you better get you a, a flat, you know, one or two or three uh, flatbed. Look at this, 75%, right? 80.4% 80, 80 in, in the Northwest. And you come over here to, was that Alabama, Louisiana? Look at this, New Orleans, Mississippi, 100%, right? So that's the case to consider adding some, some, some fleets uh, with a one to two or three car haulers because it's going to be there. It will be there for you. So migrate over to listings, the actual listing volume. Most of the inventory for Tesla, this is excluding Teslas, for the subcompact compact, most of it's in California. We all should know, you know, it makes common sense, right? Uh, this is this was a snapshot as of March of 2021. Now the active listings, when you compare subcompact and compact electric vehicles to the Nissan Leaf, you can see 33, 13, 14 on the left. Compare that to 38, 30, 39, 21 versus three. All right, so you got tw uh, 21 in Georgia versus five in Georgia. You can see that the reason why most of the other subcompacts and compact EVs are not keeping pace 
with the LEAF is because the LEAF is the one that was really more affordable for the average consumer. That's just a price point. Forget that it's a LEAF. It's a price point that, that's really driving the sale. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is a duplicate slide. Average day supply, Texas has the lowest average market day supply. So if you're a hauler, if you're taking a vehicle from any other state to Texas because of their quick turn times, that's a state that you possibly can ask a little bit more premium to make sure you're getting the vehicle delivered to a Texas dealer at a timely manner. Maybe even a little bit quicker than what they might be used to without breaking any laws or flipping or, or, or whatnot. Now, uh, the EV, subcompact to EV versus the LEAF. You know, Texas has lower average market day supply, uh, better than California, even though, they, even though California has a higher sales rate. So again, understanding your market, more than just looking at, at, at you know, how many miles can I drive, how many cars can I pick up? You gotta know where to go. You gotta know where the inventory is at. You gotta know what's available and where people are buying the inventory to go to. Um, battery electric vehicles, uh, two to two to four year olds, as you can see, you know, forty nine point one percent in California, versus here in South Carolina, thirty two point eight. North Carolina is forty one point nine. So you, we have a high density population on, uh, over here as well as in, com compared to the West Coast, especially when you go in the Northeast, and we still see more sales happening in California, and it's because because of the next thing we're going to talk about impacting on demand. The demand, consumer interest in used vehicle, battery electric cars, it's spiked, right? No wonder it's been spiking. And the Western states lead in that consumer interest. Why? Because of high new vehicle incentives, they depress used vehicle values. Those tend to go to those states that are very favorable to having a, an electric vehicle. So we took a look, I picked two vehicles out. I picked out a 2018 electric uh, um, subcompact EV average and a, um, a, 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 a Nissan Leaf electric vehicle ET. Uh, and did a comparison through, and you could see 357 monthly payment versus 385. But one vehicle was $33,495 cost, cap cost, and the other was 187. Um, how does the $33,000 vehicle give a better? payment or almost the same payment, you know, within $20, $20, the cap cost reduction. That's the incentives that's coming from the state that supports you buying, a, uh, buying a, an electric vehicle. You get that right off that you could be using towards a down payment. So what happens if that goes away? So there's some regulation that needs to change for us to be able to meet the demand, to be able to support those vehicles. Almost done, Jay, almost done. Uh, but on the pre-owned category, right, this is where the challenge comes in. There are no incentives. There are no state incentives. There's no government incentives to buy a battery electric vehicle or a hybrid electric vehicle. So there's some legislation that needs to be really looked at to make those changes. So we got to figure out a way, maybe reducing registration fees. Um, we all see the increased use of carpools and HOV lanes. Uh, level two charging stations, right? Those are charging stations that charge 30 minutes instead of two hours. Uh, and they need to be much more prevalent to be able to make them good use. Local incentives. So uh, beyond federal and state, now cities are looking at doing local incentives. Uh, so like California, Connecticut, New Jersey, they've got particular cities that are actually giving local incentives if you want to buy a new battery electric vehicle. And they are now in conversations to discuss the pre-owned uh, battery electric vehicle, which, which is great news for us. Uh, so, but keep your hat on and think, I did a slice of the battery electric vehicle market, subcompact to compact, because those are the vehicles that are affordable to more than half the country today. But they represent a greater image of what the rest of the market is going through today. So any questions? I'm thinking. <laughs> think, Paul, do you think that the incentives uh, offered on uh, second market EVs is going to uh, outstrip the concern of battery life because I think that's and I think you might have even brought this that that's a huge factor in why a lot of folks are avoiding 
you know, they'll buy new or lease without even thinking about buying a, a used EV just because the, there's a concern that in two years, you know, 60% of the car's value is shot. I would agree with you on that. I think there's a, I think a, a, a dealer who wants to remarket a, a, a pre-owned battery electric vehicle, let's say with, you know, 150,000 miles, may get a better premium and get a, extended service warranties and get financing or use leasing if they were put to put a newer, newer battery in instead of leaving the older battery in. Because the, the overall vehicle itself is great, right? Just needs a new updated battery. So there's a possibility that things are gonna come back. There's a lot of things that need to happen more on the on the regulatory side. Um, and it won't be incentives as far as, you know, like a cash down payment, it, it'll be a, something aligned for tax credits and things like that. Okay. Are you ready? I am going to ring the dinner bell. Now that we have completely made you drink from the biggest fire hose we can find. <laughs> here wow. we go. I am going to hit the start button. All right, here we go. It is now time for the Running Lane Roundtable. This is like no other roundtable before. And we, uh, thank you so much. I see you in the live chat. Could Hey, here we go. Lucas says, could this data on Nissan Leafs be extrapolated to other models of EVs? Great question. Yes, it can be. Do you think it could be extrapolated at a direct relationship to a company like Tesla that is really you know pushing the boundaries uh, on the industry Just, you... when, when we say extrapolating i mean you know to another subcompact or compact so when you get into tesla now you're getting into the ultra luxury you know the luxury and premiums and, and luxuries you would need, i would need to do that segment that segment specifically to be able to answer that question but we you know tesla right now is the the big dog in the room really, you know, pushing the boundaries uh, on the industry. As we roll in, here we go. We're rolling in. Um, and I know we're just kind of springing it upon you. So I know J jump over, mute the YouTube audio. Here we go. Hey, Luke has got a follow up. Does this include BEVs as well? Some of them are battery. And the older ones are, are, are battery electric vehicles. Yes. Awesome. All right. And so, yeah, thank you, Luca, for the questions. Please keep them coming. If you've got, this is actually pretty cool because if you have EV questions and it's likely that you do, um, for example, like Paul, what I just saw a headline today, like somebody was canceling their hydrogen car, you know, and then you could go, well, what's a hydrogen car? Like what is going, it's, and, and in fact, it, we were sitting in at car conference and there was a, they were talking about how, yeah, it's like a skateboard and they put the batteries on and they'll pull batteries out and put them back in. I was thinking like safety deposit boxes, mm -hmm. right? You're a, you're a mm -hmm. safety deposit box mechanic. Um, but uh, yeah, what does that mean for the suspension and right? Like, oh man, it's going to get crazy. Uh, if you like the body style on a particular model year, then all you got to do is replace that that battery skateboard or find the appropriate replacement. You know, you could be driving a '56 Chevy for the next 85 years. An electric Chevy. I'm I'm with you. It's gonna get super retro. It's really pretty exciting. So, um, so yeah, and and it's not going away. In fact, I was. Did you did you notice that Ty? Ty and I we got on like different tracks. Did you see like that GM EV presentation? Oh yeah, I think you did. And I was thinking, you know, they just threw that in there. They didn't just throw it in there, but no matter where you go, and that's why I thank you, Paul, because no matter where you go, you're going to be seeing more and more EV information. Unless, yeah. unless one day, I guess you're, you're running from the tidal wave. You're like, oh, I didn't, I wasn't paying attention. And now you're paddling. Okay. Okay, Ty, help me out. Where do we start here? I think Carlos was in here first. Yeah, he was. I want to. Uh, I I had to do things different, so I can only see like 
just a few people. So if I'm missing somebody, okay. let me know. But I do want to point out, okay, so Carlos is here. I want to definitely talk to Carlos. I see Andre. I see Harrison, which I want to talk to Harrison. I want to talk to Andre. And uh, who's that? And Doyle. Okay, uh, who was it? Lionel, Lionel Yates, and then there's Lloyd. Okay, got it. All right. Um, and Lloyd, too. I've got a surprise maybe Friday on Cars on the Move. But, uh, Carlos, since we've got Joe here and we're talking about maintenance, Carlos, tell us uh, what you're doing right now. Oh, everybody. So, how are y'all? I want to talk to Harris. I want to talk to Andre. And... <laughs> Carlos? <laughs> It's an experiment. Hey. We're, we're, we're experimenting. We're pushing the boundaries of Zoom. So thank you for, for tuning Two. in. Sure, we've got a sure. surprise maybe Friday. Hey, you are. hey, Ty, can you hear me? There you are. Yeah, yeah where are you at and what are you doing? I'm in West Virginia at a rest stop. Uh, the guys, I finally got someone to come out and look at my truck. They think I have a dead cylinder in my engine, which was kind of surprising because I do a lot of maintenance on time my truck and it just had no uh symptoms of that so i'm kind of <laughs> caught off guard with that one Peter. dead cylinder well, yeah. maybe have a better connection are they you uh say, say i'm sorry what they think uh, i had an injector that uh went bad and started dumping too much fuel in one cylinder and it burned that cylinder up my truck they think i have a dead cylinder in my engine it's kind of surprising because I do a lot of maintenance. And we got a loop going, so make sure if you either mute your mic. Uh, I know we've been watching the show because we've been going for an hour and 40 minutes. We're going to be here all night, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> but remember to mute your <laughs> Todd's like, what? <laughs> remember to mute your mic and also mute the stream. And then now here we're back in the Zoom. So that's interesting. Uh, keep going, Carlos. I hear you. Yeah, so... Uh... If it's, the, if it's an engine, I'm going to go look. I'm, I've been looking for a new truck anyway. I've been looking for like an M2 or a small Pete or a Kenworth. So I just continue to look for one of those. That will be a better deal than what I have now. Yeah, for sure. So uh, are you able to drive? No. This thing smokes like a freight train. Okay. So you're going to have to be towed from the rest area? Uh, I have a friend that's going to come pick me up uh, probably tomorrow or the next day once he's finished his route. So you're going to stay in your truck in the rest area for maybe a day or two? Yes, sir. And I'm assuming you've got water and food? Oh, yeah. I have a load on my trailer. I'm waiting for somebody to come pick up the load that I have also. Okay. So this is good to start out with Carlos. It's not funny, <laughs> but wow. Yeah. Yeah. Did you just hear all that? That is. And Carlos, we thank you for being here with us and telling us about it. It's amazing. Carlos, what, yeah. what year is... What year is the uh, is the tractor? It's not, I don't have a tractor. I have a F fifty five uh, fifty five hundred Ram oh, seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. Yeah, a yeah. tractor's too big for what I do. I do a lot of home deliveries. If I had a tractor, I would never be able to get into that neighborhood. Yeah, that's why I need a, a, a smaller truck, like a Pete or a small Pete or M two freight liner. Yeah, but your 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 analysis will be uh, the cost breakdown is dead dead on point. Thank you. Yeah, that's well, that's a great example. You know, and the the blown injector on a diesel, you know, it, it's hard to detect on the upfront. Usually, you can catch those things when on when the engine misses on a PM, and um, yeah, not a lot you can do. Yes, yeah, this one didn't, didn't give me any kind of symptoms. I'm like, normally you see a little bit of smoke, or like you said, you feel a little hesitation in RPM, but it didn't do anything. I was climbing the hill, and all of a sudden, it's like goodbye. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry you're in that spot there, brother. That sucks. That's all right. That's part of the business. If you, if you can't handle it, you get out of the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that the reason I wanted to start out with that is uh, Carlos is in pretty much every Tuesday night live chat, every Wednesday DOT, every Thursday dispatching live, and every Friday cars on the move. You can't watch a ATI show without seeing Carlos Brex and ABC Logistics and so it definitely part of the community I, did, I had no idea that that was going on when we had talked earlier text you thought it might be the turbo so you know in there in this this again guy I mean this you know Joe said it 
you're seeing it here live. Carlos is telling us it, in car hauling, these things happen. And so now we got to find somebody to come and get the load. Then we got to figure out who's going to come and get you. Then we got to figure out who's going to come and get the truck. And then we got to figure out where we're going to take the truck. Right. Right. And then while we're doing all that, we got to figure out, um, maybe we should buy, I call it the beer truck. That's what he's talking about. If case anybody doesn't know, it's the beer truck. You see it behind the quick trip unloading Coke and beer, the M2 freight liner, the baby Pete, baby Ken. So this is, uh, Terrible news, but it really ties in well with what Joe's saying. And these, Joe, how would you describe this? Was this is an unex, indirect? Is that correct? Uh, the, the, no, well, it's no, it's neither direct nor indirect. It's a, it's a, it's a meteorite. It's a, out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh yeah, it's, and it it's happens. A, yeah, it's a, it's a stuff happens. You know, couldn't probably couldn't have been avoided. Probably just you know parts wore out. Uh, you know, like I said, hard to detect. Uh, you know, he, he, right now he's wishing it was the turbo because that's an interchangeable part. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we hate to hear cylinder. that. Yeah, we hate to hear that. But it, again, it, <clears throat> Carlos, you're such a big part of ATI, and we're thankful that you're here, and we're sorry for the problem. Uh, it's all right. I'll get through it. Yeah. I'm going to skip over on my screen. I see Andre. Andre and oh, I have talked. absolutely maybe. right. I, I, I second that. What's that? That, you know, Carlos, we see you all the time. So we appreciate you. We want you to keep us posted. And um, our thoughts are with you, man. Absolutely. Not brave, buddy. Not brave. Yeah. Andre, where are you at? I'm at home. How you doing? I'm in Indiana. Indiana, at home. What's your, where are you at in the process? I can't remember. It's been a while. Yeah, I'm hauling fuel right now. I'm um, six months away. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait until um, probably about three months out. I'm gonna have my trailer built. Ah, okay. What kind of trailer are you going for? Well, I'm gonna start with a four car um, Molly. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Molly. Uh, I forgot the last part of it. Uh, it's, a, it's definitely it's a four car trailer. It's a uh, Molly. Hatchet. Huh? <laughs> I know. Molly hatchet. It's got to be a hatchet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I forgot the name of the the last part of the name. But it's, it's it's a uh, four car um, Is it trailer. A sure, I'm starting with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. What was it? Wally Mo. Oh, Wally Mo. Yeah, yeah. Wally Mo. Yeah, I said it wrong. Yeah, a Wally Mo. Four car Wally Mo. Okay, good. Wally Mo's been around. They make a decent product. That sounds good. Four car Indiana. Uh, what are some of the things you've been working on? Right now, I'm just working on building capital. Um, in the trucking industry, a lot of people don't realize you need money. So, so that's why I'm still hauling fuel because you know I make a certain you know I make a decent amount of money each month. So I'm just building capital before I go on my own, and I'll be using the semi tractor. I know that, like now, I now I haul fuel, so it's a lot of weight on my tractor. So I know once I start hauling cars. It's going to be a lot better on my truck going up hills and uh, in different terrain with a lot less weight. So I'll be using uh, my semi, which will be paid off in two months. Good for you. You know, good. you're going to notice, too, with uh, with cars versus fuel or any liquid, the fuel in particular, you know, that just it sloshes all over the place. It oh, yeah. Hell on the back of that truck. It's it's dragging you this way and that way. Cars, you'll see that with high winds and a tall load. Not probably not with a four car, but uh, yeah, it, you're you're gonna. It's gonna be suddenly a hell of a lot easier you pulling those hills. Yeah, it what? definitely is. I'm actually looking forward to it. What are you? Uh, what's your plan to generate revenue besides tall cars? Are you doing load board? Are you doing dealers? What are you thinking? Well, actually, I was going to schedule another call with you. I remember you said don't just depend on load boards. Um, so I, I definitely wanted to um, go out and build relationships, start talking to people. Um, yeah. it, it's it's kind of hard right now because I'm working six days a week hauling fuel. So my focus <clears> right now is just building capital. But once I'm done, I have enough money saved up to where I can focus on building relationships, learning the load board, do like a combination of both. Yeah. So I, just – 
Go ahead. Find a home yeah. base, Andre. Find find a plate. Find someone that you can work with close to home that that gets you launched into whatever direction doesn't matter north south west or east and make friends with them and then try and build your lane and the first the first lane is going to be crazy it's not going to work but but as you talk it through and you start to build those relationships then that's when that really kind of starts taking off and then two relationships will become three will become well let me introduce you to andre he's a good guy and down the line so but start small start with the person that's close by and the rest of it will sort of take care of itself it'll take time but the rest of it will take care of itself. Use the internet. If you're working and you're on the road, I respect that. Uh, try and just, just make, use the hell out of some Google. You know, see if you can't get a hold of some people that are, are close to home that can launch you out into the direction you want to go. Thank you. There are a lot of That's startups good. too, Andre, that are, uh, that are doing, you know, they want two to four car haulers. That's their specialty. You know, they're the last mile delivery, you know, Try to sign up with CarMax, Carvana, Vroom, uh, get a car based on, in Philly. Um, Carigoo, which is in Kentucky, I know you're in Indiana, but Carigoo just started. They're looking at um, being able to deliver vehicles anywhere in the country. You know, but most most of the time it's going to be, you know, two or three at a time, and you're you're driving these vehicles off as you as you get to your final destination. That's good. Good input. I'm going to move yeah, over. Like to Andre, thanks for coming. I see Harrison. Harrison, are you there, buddy? I am, yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks for taking the time. Harrison, where, what are you doing? Where are you at? Uh, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I have a tow truck operation. You tow truck? Well, what were you doing before tow truck, so? Before <laughs> tow I was, I worked at a tow truck operation, and uh, it was getting old. I was doing the heavy runs like the the 18 wheelers and um i wanted to do the hauling um and i did it for about a year and like as i, I hear everybody say like what they're up to and uh what this guy's going through with the dodge that's broken down i, I mean it's just it's giving me the flashback <laughs> i've had ptsd <laughs> and i see um Lionel over there I'm sure like I mean I've called him and said man my insurance is killing me this and that and uh yeah so I did all of this for about a year it didn't work out and um the towing is actually working out but yeah yeah well and there, and it's good to hear your story too because I think you made flip of the week at least once right <laughs> oh my god yeah no i actually bought a brand new um a dodge which i should have got an m2 you're right you should totally do that um but i bought a brand new 5500 because i had a chevy 3500 that like the emissions was just always down so i bought a brand new dodge which ty told me to get a beer truck and do it i got um a dodge and they did the fifth wheel, all this stuff, took them three weeks. I'm going to go to the shop. It'll be safe, right? I pick up the fucking truck. I go, oh, I'm sorry for swearing. Um, I go to California, which is about 300 miles from the place I'm at. Uh, the fenders for the wheels fall off an hour into it. And then I come home. This is 48 hours after I picked it up the fifth wheel falls off of the frame they a bolt um i pulled up um i pulled over obviously once the fifth wheel fell off i was at a light and i accelerated at a, about three miles an hour i turned to the right and i had two i think three cars on there boom and i get out because i'm shocked i feel like the truck should have flipped over too it's a fifth wheel right it didn't so I, I get out, I'm like holding on, I'm like expecting to flip, and there's a bolt that like that is for the fifth wheel they didn't install. And so yeah, and then I fixed that, I got a new five car, and then on the first run, the fuel pump on the 2020, it went out. And uh, yeah, I was down for even longer. It was just a mess. And 
Joe, the presentation that you did, that was great. And as the tour, um, I'm like going through it. I just kind of thought of all these things that like happened to me and how I could have planned for certain things. I mean, a few of these things I certainly couldn't have planned for, but um, if it's okay, I'd like to talk with you just because you seem knowledgeable and awesome. So, yeah, that's the deal. I um, I went through all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in in Harry, I like Harrison, and I, I really like Harrison a lot. Harrison calls me, <laughs> and we've gotten to know each other quite a bit. Well, the reason I like to point out Harrison is because Harrison actually is a car hauler. Harrison, his personality, okay, we, we don't talk about personality a lot, but Harrison's personality is short, mile, fast, and I gotta, he needs to be slammed every 10 seconds, right? Just call him ADD or ADHD or both. But I've got to be something. <laughs> yeah. And, and knowing that, he's doing tow truck now, flatbed, two car rollback. He's in Scottsdale area. He's figured out a niche. He's busier than he can be, and he's happy. So now we're getting ready to move into how do we scale this? What's the next step? And, you know, just just like listening to Joe, listening to Paul, Paul's a great asset for a guy like Harrison because these car dealers want these cars fast. I mean, you heard Paul say it how many times? 30, 32 days gone. I mean, and that's never had. I've been in it for 20 years. I've never heard of that. So uh, <clears throat> there is opportunity there. And if your personality is such that I don't like to drive 150, 200, 300, 400 miles in a day, I like to just go cross town, pick up a car, drop it off, do it again, do it again, do it again. Uh, know yourself. That's what I'm saying. So, Harrison, it's always good to have you here because I know you're a busy guy. I know you got things to do, but I do appreciate you staying. If you if you can stay, I know you, you might get a call and you got to go. But I'm going to move over to, I think that's Lloyd. Lloyd is a... Uh, Lloyd, where are you at now? Hello. I'm sitting there with my favorite chair at the house in Little Rock. Okay, Little Rock. You made it back. You were in Jersey Monday? I got back uh, Monday morning from Jersey, yes. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing better now. I'm not in Jersey. <laughs> That's uh. Everybody has their lane. <laughs> that's not necessarily your lane is it lloyd no um you know I, my deals i have a, a couple of big dealers and they asked me to go to jersey and i put it off for two weeks and they said well we want you to go to jersey and i said well i guess they need me to go so i went to jersey uh, just to do a dealer trade uh they got the shortage on vehicles having to go all the way to jersey to do a dealer trade it was getting to be pretty scarce out there what kind of equipment, Lloyd? I've got an F450 with a Kaufman EZ4. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the tolls in New Jersey are the most notorious thing. Uh, That's I, one, of, one of the I reasons why I didn't want to go. Yeah, <laughs> and, it's not, and it's getting worse. Uh, I worked in Newark, in Port Newark, for a, a year and change, and you talked about, Ty, you talked about Short Mile. Uh, the folks out there in Port Newark, man, that they're animals. Uh, you get flipping off two loads to Brooklyn every day. Some guys get three. Uh, with ELD, they might not be able to do that anymore. But, the, you know, these guys running two loads out, one load across the bridge to Long Island or in New Jersey, and that's, man, that is a, a tough, tough jag. My heart goes, and my, my respect to all those folks that are able to make that work that are living out there. Well, the other thing that blew me away was I was between Philadelphia and Atlantic City there Saturday night, and the hotels were $500 a night. Mm hmm I was just like, no, this is crazy. Yeah, Jersey sends its love. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's terrible. Well, Lloyd has kind of been a, a guy who's been in the, the group, in the chats, kind of community for sure. But <clears throat> I've actually had a couple of times to actually kind of get to know Lloyd and talk to him on the phone about just life and personal things. And uh, if everything goes right, we might have a special surprise on Friday with Lloyd. Uh, looking forward to that too. Lloyd's, Lloyd's in a great location, in my opinion. I'm, I love Arkansas. Uh, I love doing business in Arkansas, Little Rock. There's a lot of big dealers down there, and so 
having a guy like Lloyd around is, is really awesome. So we're always happy to have you, Lloyd. Thank you. Yeah. What are some of the challenges? You got anything really pressing on you right now or how, how's it going? I just passed my DOT audit um, Friday and then I've got my letter of approval for saying I passed uh, yesterday in the mail. So glad to have that over with and that stress and doing that. But uh, good to know, you know, well, you've got all your ducks in a row. It's not so bad. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I feel for you, you know, Harrison, having the fuel pump problems. A big part of my business right now is the dealers having me go out and recover broke down vehicles. Um, the dealer I work with, they got have great, excellent, excellent customer service. And one of their customers break down, it doesn't matter what part of the country, they have me come get a loaner vehicle and I go take them a loaner and pick up theirs and bring it back. And it's a, a niche okay. that I'm capable to have the dealers trust in me to do it and it keeps me busy but with the four car then I just try and fill a slot but I try and fill it off the boards but uh, some of the dealers I work with they call me up and it just kind of works out to where hey I'm going the same direction so sure I'll take care of it for you all right so you have a you I would say you have more of a client base versus a load board load board yes. you use to kind of fill in the gaps, the holes when you need to. But having that relationship, you, you can see or you can hear Lloyd when he's talking about, you know, who, <clears throat> how much do you, we don't need to know, but how much does a dealer pay to take one car to New Jersey and one car to come back? And to trust a guy to be fair on the price and put that deal together, that that's relationship, right? And that's the kind of thing that we talk about, knowing your car dealer, knowing your neighborhood, knowing your lane. <clears throat> So Lloyd doesn't have a lane. In my opinion, Lloyd's lane is his customer. And he's developed this relationship that enables him to have this lane. I'll go where you need me to go as long as the money's right. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, I, hear, you know, I consider myself very fortunate because I, I get paid to deadhead. And I, you know, I know uh, not a lot of guys get paid to, to run empty. So I call it my ghost vehicle. I've got a ghost vehicle on here. You just can't see it, <laughs> you know. But, um, you know, Paul talking about the short turnaround, uh, a lot of these that I go and pick up for these dealers, it is already sold. They, they know that I, the integrity, develop that relationship, yes. They know that when I tell them, oh, like the Jersey run, I told them, look, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I finally told him, all right, sure, I'll pick it up on this day from you, and then I'll be in Jersey on such and such a day and have it back to you Monday morning. And that's what I did. And so the dealer was ecstatic. You know, even though he had to wait two weeks for me to do it, he wanted me to do it. That's good. exactly the advice I gave Andre before about, you know, find that, find that jumping point, you know, build that relationship. And then the rest of those other relationships, they'll, those dots will start to connect themselves as you, you know, over time. So uh, Lloyd is is proof in, proof in concept uh, right there. Thank yeah. you. It is, it's good. Hard, it is. It's, it's hard work. And that, um, you know, to commit yourself and, yes, the home time, taking it away from the home time, the family, and, you know, get a 12-year-old playing baseball and going to Boy Scouts and camping and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a toll. It really is. Yeah, and Joe, when you pointed that out, I, I that's something like you just know. But when you when you said that, Joe, about you know we we plan on working 365 days a year for the next three years. <laughs> that was that was a good. That was like, whoa, you're right. We don't do that. <clears throat> I always have. I and I'm guilty of that. I I'm the guy that thinks you just work 22 hours a day and you're you're good, but uh, maybe not. So. Lloyd, always good to have you. I'm going to scoot over here. John C. L. A. I. Right? Did I get that right, John C.? Oh, lost John C. Check, check. Yeah, there you got it. John, I call you John C. because John G., which is Griffo and Lou Ann, they were going to make it but couldn't make it. I got an email from them, Jay. They got tied up with something, but. Uh, yeah, so I call you John John C. and you're in D.C., correct? Yes. Yep. Good old D.C. And uh, 
you're you're another regular that we love seeing in the live chat all the time. Really well, appreciate you being there. I love being here. It's great. What do you? Uh, I know you you do drive a bus right now, right? Is that right? Yeah, um, I drive a bus, but we're trying to get started. We got our truck. We're just looking for a Take Three trailer. Uh, well, a three car hauler trailer. It don't have to be made by Take Three, but yeah, we're looking for a uh, three car right now. We're trying to get started by September first. Wow. And you, you've actually, I think I talked to you. You've been hanging around here for over six yep. months, right? Yep. I got two dealerships that will work with me. In fact, I took my car to get fixed. The guy's like, the owner's like, hey, you got that trailer yet? I got cars that need to go to the auction. So I was like, no, but don't give them, don't give them away because we'll be on the road here in a minute. So he's waiting for us. So, yeah. So you're going and talking to car dealers and you're getting people to tell you how to, so. Yep. I talk, to uh, I talk to everybody. If I see a car hauler on the side of the road, doing so, I pull over and talk to them. Say, hey, can you give me any advice? Hey, what do you know? Hey, you need any help? You know, I have a couple say, yeah, you, can, you know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make it work. Just by about September. We got our truck, like I said. We're just waiting for the trailer. Oh, so, now what kind of truck did you end up with? Well, I'm a Ford man. Don't hate on me. I'm, I was born and raised in Ford, so my grandfather works. So I got an F-350 Dually. Okay. So, Have you talked to Lionel about insurance yet? No, I actually, I was hoping I, I could get in touch with him um, because uh, I do need to look at insurance. And then what about Brian DOT? Where are you at on that? Um, well, I just got a class B CDL. I have my class A learners, so I'm trying to get my class A license, but I'm going to run as a, a non CDL for a while. Well, I, what I meant was authority. Have you got your authority? Or you may have already said it. I didn't. Yeah, we. Up, yep. Got your authority. So got your authority, got your truck, waiting on the trailer and need to call Lionel. And you're talking yeah. to car dealers, making relationships and talking nope. to every car hauler you see. I'm talking you, to you, but talk to me. You'll talk to the people that won't talk to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to them too. <laughs> they, that's oh, what I do. <laughs> well, that's what I do. Hey, you can't make it. You don't talk to them, right? Yeah. Well, that's good. I yeah. And it, and it, John is an actually interesting story because I remember actually remember the first time I talked to you, I, I you know, you kind of told me what you're doing. We kind of talked about it. If I remember right, if I'm wrong, tell me. But to see you uh, really, I, and I, I, I'm not saying this because we haven't talked in a long time, but it, if I feel like you may have taken some of the information you got out of me and maybe applied it meaning and i'm not talking i'm great or anything but i think we talked about you know you need some money saved up and i think that might be why you were still driving the bus right yeah yep yeah. uh actually i got found an uh, investor who wants to invest so he's fronted some some a great deal of money to get started okay got an investor that equals money uh yep. uh, what's the how, how does that how's that arranged john is that a an equity partnership or is it essentially a structured like a loan or, or something yeah, like structured that? like a loan yeah he started he put it on he wants a certain amount back after the first year of business okay and so after, yeah are they, are they a, a regular lending institution or, no, or just a private private, private person okay I, so I made it known to everybody under the sun and it's, it's somebody i knew I said hey this and he so we got to talk and then so he's like, I'll put up some money, but you got to pay me back a certain amount after your first year of business. Okay. So, so I, I would really strongly advise you to make sure you spend some time with a CPA who specializes in uh, trucking and transportation logistics businesses because uh, those funding, those, those types of funding can sometimes, number one, offer you incentives, um, you know, through right. small businesses and things like that. There's a lot of minor. Uh, by the way, you know this is for everybody. There's a lot of minority and veterans and female-owned type of arrangements that can be to your advantage uh, in, that, in that you know uh, in, in what you're doing, and especially because uh, a good CPA will be able to tell you how much of of that loan you're going to be able to write off on the taxes that you pay forward on a pay forward on a quarterly basis. So uh, you'll, you'll want to know what that number is from a cash flow, cash flow perspective as you put your pro forma together and how your business plan is going to look. And I say that to anybody, really. Uh, a, a good CPA is a, an invaluable resource to a private enterprise in trucking. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah. Joe's absolutely right. I don't talk about that enough, but Joe knocked that one right out of the park. 
and your CPA does need to be your best friend. That's excellent advice. Good job, Joe. Okay, I think now, John, thank you so much. I think we've got Lionel. Lionel, who do you got with you there? You got the Grim Reaper and his wife on here tonight after that from Joe. Hey. <laughs> I got great news for you guys. Tonight. Uh, the uh, the higher level uh, haulers, they now want the general liability off the truck. So if you're hauling for the uh, larger corporations, the Cox Automotive, which basically has their hands in everything, they own uh, Central Dispatch, mm -hmm. uh, also Supreme, which does a lot of the new cars down here up here in the Northeast. They want you to have a general liability policy when you're walking through their premises and as you drive the trucks to the to your truck. So I just wanted to add that in there. So, I, you know, I hate to be the Grim Reaper, but, you know, just just like Joe said, it's ever changing and it's uh, ever so evolving. Lionel, is that like a total constructive loss and that kind of stuff? Is that what that's all about? Yeah. Yeah, they want to. They want to make sure all all the risks is 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 covered in its entirety from 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 the time that that trucker j jumps off the uh, tractor and walks out about a half mile out to go get the car. You have an accident out on the flat, and uh, I've seen it happen. And um, you know he's not covered, and it, it wasn't a required uh, coverage from a lot of the, the 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 customers that were out there. So I guess a lot more, you know, rubber on the road, a lot more cars moving, increase the risk. So they're calling it out now. The good now thing is that we have a good market for it right as of the moment. <clears throat> so I would advise okay, so both the guys to get into that, you know, like get that taken care of now before you're not able to get it or able to get it at a reasonable cost. Okay, so I'm going to do a trucker recap to make sure I think I heard what I thought I heard. Mannheim and Odessa are now requiring car haulers, carriers, to have the general liability policy. Yes, sir. For a million or a hundred thousand? Uh, a million dollars, right, right around there at that level. Two, two, two million dollars aggregate. Meaning, if you have two incidents at one time. <laughs> They want both of them covered if, if it happens twice at the same time. So, you know, it, it really doesn't cost that much. So, uh, you know, the chances of that happen, two, the two incidents happen at the same time are really slim to none. So it will cover an aggregate, but it's a million per occurrence. Yeah. Well, um, I do remember I, it's it would be tempting to uh, bag on Odessa and Mannheim right now because everybody knows that I'm good at doing that. But I'm going to. I'm going to pause for a second before I start saying bad things, because I, I had one of my when I first got started, one of my best accounts, Roper Pontiac, GMC, Joplin, Missouri. The owner, Hal, comes out one day and it's just me and I'm unloading cars. And he says, do you have this ability in case something happens to you on my lot? No, I'm just a one guy show. Well, if you want to haul cars for me, you have to have it. And I was, OK, so I went and got it, it fine. But that was back when it was me and one and. I didn't have a problem with the cost. So ballpark us if you can, maybe. What's what's the additional cost now for that coverage? I'd say about a thousand dollars a year. Uh, they they give you an opportunity to finance it. Uh, probably about forty percent down, a little, a little higher than uh, auto coverage down payment. But it covers you correctly, and for the cost per month that you pay on it, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. It's if you're expanding your business tie, you know, you know, you know, a lot of people like to keep the assessment down. But as you grow, you, you know, you got more rubber on the road, more drivers out there and, you know, more attitudes and egos. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a mixture for a circumstance of uh, an accident or something to happen. Well, and, and again, I'm I'm the world's biggest fan of bagging on Mannheim and Odessa. Uh, they've taken plenty of hours of my life in the transport parking lot. But. On this situation, this topic, I, I see it as a benefit for actually you. If you don't have it, there, uh, we've all been in the transport parking lot or inside the auction trying to find a car, and yeah. we've all experienced something that was so old, right? Yeah, yes. At least I have. 
So, and for a thousand bucks a year, I, that's not, not necessarily a bad thing. What do you, what do you think? What do you think, Joe? You know, let's, I would, I would take advantage of of that now Mm -hmm. instead of trying to jump on after the circumstance that they realize that that there's a, uh, a market increase in that because you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. Now, do you know if that's coming directly from the the ready logistics or that's what I want to know? Yeah, send me a link right. to that article or information. Okay. Well, I got the I got it basically from a written statement from R I R M I S, which is taken over for Cox Automotive for their uh, insurance registry. So you, they're no longer doing the insurance for the uh, haulers now. They they turned it over to R M I S. If you've heard of them, registry, what's the, the, the name of the company? I have registry monitoring. Yes. Yep. This yes, that, that's mm-hmm. been turned as of today. That's turned over to them for uh, Cox Automotive. Be interesting really? to see how they enforce yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. But definitely. Uh, wow, that's hot off the press, Jay. I yes, know it is. I, right? Wow. I talked. I talked to uh, Adriana. You gave actually you gave me Rachel, if you remember correctly, Ty today, and I called up there, and I ended up talking to Adriana, and uh, we we did get through. I was hoping Dwayne would be on the line. Check, check this out. But, uh, <laughs> Look at this. Okay, so when you go to rmis.com, we are pleased to announce that RMIS is now a truckstop.com company. Read about the acquisition. Hmm. Wow. Now, truckstop.com, that's a freight load board as far as I know, but maybe they're yes. an umbrella like, I wonder, I wonder if truckstop.com is a Cox Automotive company. Anyway, it's very fascinating stuff. Yeah. Okay, Lionel, uh, we're going to let you give a little plug on the, the costs of it. Joe in his uh, direct and indirect insurance was in there. So do you want to add to anything here? Yeah, I just want to go back, uh, um, and I'm, I'm going to have Linda t- uh, chime in on the on the back end here. We got some more breaking just news for you guys. It's, <laughs> it's a small amount, but uh, as far as costs is concerned in terms of uh, auto hauling itself, it's all predicated on profiling. And uh, I was hoping Dwayne actually got on the show tonight. I think you sent him an invite out. <laughs> But the, I don't think he, he's really he's retired. You, we got him set up with uh, Jack Cooper down there in Maryland, and Jack's been running a mess out of him there on that short mile. <laughs> so, so <laughs> but uh, as far as cost is concerned, it's all about the profile. Uh, you have to do your due diligence up front. Guys, please do not establish your corporation or your DOT number and then call me up and say, give me some insurance. Please do not do that, because the greatest thing about being in America, you get to start a company where? Anywhere you want to. So why would you open up a trucking company close to a city? Think about that. You wouldn't do it with your regular car. So what do you think the insurance is going to be when you have a tractor trailer with more cars and trucks that are around you what do you think the insurance company will say bend over yep <laughs> yep yes <My> <laughs> <bend. laughs> to say so uh, also your, take take your credit into consideration uh you know talk to maybe partnering with somebody who has better credit than yourself, but don't go in there with messed up credit in your nearest city and then say, Hey, my buddy's paying $500 a month. You, you know, you, you're not going to get the same profile. You have multiple profiles coming from multiple people. So what somebody tells you and what they're going to cost, cost you out for insurance will be two completely different things. If you don't have that person's profile. That's crazy. I just want to add for perspective. I love the segments that we have in here. And I mean, there's no script. It's all real. Mm -hmm. And I mean, from five minutes to the next five minutes, it's amazing. So that's, 
I'm still fascinated by this RMIS news, so thank you guys so much. <laughs> Be interesting. So, Lionel, you got something else to share? Yeah. Okay. I'm supposed to announce this great news that Sunday, July the 11th through Saturday, July 17th, is Operation Safe Driver Week. Did anyone know that? Yes. Very good. And the focus this year is speeding. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Where, yeah. Where, where where is this information coming the, from? The FMCSA. FMCSA, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Wow. So the query, guys. Uh, Please. It's you know it's a time for you know level ones. Of course, they they you know it's very easy for them to take it up to that level if you're not in in shape. So you know take the time out before that date. Do your maintenance or Please. stay off the road. <laughs> 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 well, just, there's an increase of safety right. during at 11th through the 17th and believe me they are pulling you over yes they, they say that uh the, the emphasis is on speeding and uh the tremendous majority of speeding tickets in my experience are, are not drivers going 75 miles an hour in a 65 the tremendous majority of speeding tickets are drivers that did 42 in a 30 or 30 yep. or zone. You know? And in some, some states, uh, that is, you can get locked up 10 to 15 miles an hour over the speed limit, too. So be, yeah. be aware. Yeah, so speeding is a big thing uh, from, you know, in those low zones and especially when they get into safety zones, construction zones, you know, all those kinds of things because they're just, they're just they're counting the money. When they, when they see you come in, it's fines, fines, fines. And I, I think the other thing I'd say, you know, we, uh, I would always stress, not, not to imply that anybody here doesn't do this, but I would always stress, keep a tidy machine. Uh, because when you show up and that inspector is, has got you on the side of the road and they're looking over your equipment, there's one of two things going through their head. It's, oh Lord, I just want to get home to my wife. Yeah dinner tonight or the other thing is look at this thing oh my god you know and then he, and then, all right let's get the book out so you you want to be in the first category you want to be you want to be encouraging him to discuss you know uh things outside of your truck you know that that's a very very it's a big thing if you keep a tidy truck if you keep a clean truck uh, if you keep your equipment in order if you if you know where everything is that the officer requests and you're able to give it to them, Johnny, on the spot, then you are tremendously more likely to move on through with a, with a good job award, and off you go. Yes, indeed. Be DOT prepared. Get yourself a clipboard or a uh, notebook. Put all your data and paperwork inside, and don't have any questions to be asked by the officer. Just hand him the notebook, and he shouldn't be asking you any questions because everything he needs is right there in that notebook. Can I tell you my, my funny story for the week? Not, not that I have one, but uh, one, of the, one of the pet peeves that I always had when I would go past the driver when they were loading, I used to spend a lot of time out on the loading docks when I could talking to drivers. And, and the, one of the pet peeves that I always had was finding the freaking fire extinguisher not secured. Yep. In the little hoop, but the hoop wouldn't be locked. And... It is the simple, I mean, you're at a, at a car carrier, you're staring right at it when, when you open the door. But that's a violation, unsecured fire extinguisher. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be the guy that gets gigged for that. Okay. <laughs> that's right. That's right. No, I I know. So, hey, yeah, buddy, what I, are you in for? Unsecured fire extinguisher. No, you know what it is, Jay? That's that's what you call a gateway right there. When he sees the fire extinguisher, then he goes into that, oh, Lord, look at this. Yeah, there it is. That's yeah. what happens right there. <laughs> that's it. That's the one. Um, Jay, I'll tell you what. I just mm -hmm. got a uh, notice on my phone here. I'm about to lose the battery. Okay. I had to redo my whole setup tonight. So, yeah, I'll hear you. Um, I'll tell you what, this was really, Amazing. Joe, wow. just beautiful information. Paul, I know Paul's gone, but man, 
And then to have Carlos share his real life story again, you know, I keep going back to if you watch the video that says you can make a lot of money hauling cars, you can. It just may take a while and you need to prepare for it. Uh, you know, Joe's been in this business a long time. Lionel's been a car hauler. We've all had our hand in it in some way and we've all benefited in some way. We've learned a lot. And I think the beautiful thing is, is that we have real people just, you know, when Harrison said, man, Joe, I want to talk to you, you know, to, to see that happen and to have that platform, Joe, thank you so much. That's, that's really cool. It really is. It's great to be here. Yeah. Hey, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Lloyd, please. Carl, Carlos, I know you said you're broke down in the rest area. What, where, what, whereabouts, what state are you in? Uh, I'm in West Virginia, in uh, Hurricane, West Virginia. Okay. I have talked to Ty about this, and uh, Jay, this goes along with you also as well. I, uh, one thing I really like about what you're doing here, uh, guys, is just this network. What you're developing this network, and I was telling Jay, or Ty, excuse me, that it's nice to have this network so if we have a connection to where we break down, such as what the situation Carlos is in. If you were in Arkansas right now, I would say, hey, I'd come get your trailer, get it to a safe spot. Put your truck. I can get your truck up on my trailer and get you to a dealer. And so being able to have that connection, and uh, so I, hopefully you know they get you taken care of. And I feel bad for you being in that situation that you're in. But um, I, I, Jay, to you for what you're doing here and developing this and putting this all together uh, to, get, to get to get this network going, and then and just kind of expand on what Lionel was saying, the the liability insurance. I'm fortunate enough that I've had it for a couple of years now. And Rams, yes, they, they, they did do a uh, check on me um, earlier in the year, right after my renewal, and saw that I had that liability insurance, and so I'm already approved with Cox and Ready Logistics and what they require on these lots and things. But uh, to kind of add what Lionel was saying, um, Lionel, it's, it's good to get with your insurance before you do this business stuff because uh, on me, just for my renewal, Storing. Where do you store? Where do you park your vehicles at? Made a five thousand dollar difference in my premium, and I was like, really? Just no matter where I park my truck and what Lionel's saying, you know, what what all's around where you are. So it's all good information, uh, Jay, Ty. So thank you very very much. Appreciate it, Joe. What you did tonight, absolutely spot on. I asked so many guys, you know, what's your cost per mile? They don't have a clue uh, to what it costs to get down the road and do this. Um, but, um, yeah, the tickets, the citations, you got to have good equipment. I've been pulled over at random six times this year. <laughs> and I, I blame it on being, having a, having a clean, sharp looking truck and everything. So they, I think the officer thinks, oh, here's, here's an easy one, you know, get through this and he can get on down his day. But, uh, so all this thing, all this information we've talked about here this evening, spot on to the point. So thanks guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lloyd. You know, and I'll tell you, here's the really good news. Now we're hearing some companies and businesses are seeing what's happening here, and they're liking it too. So we, we might actually be building some sort of bridge uh, that we, we didn't know that could be built. And we're going to keep on building and see where this goes. So it's so great. Yeah. Is it a bridge between the verticals, Jay? Uh, yeah. I guess because I mean if, if they're verticals you have you, you need you can, it has to be a bridge between the verticals because the vertical they can't anyway that's right. horizontals, and it, and it, might, it might be a rope bridge at the moment that will try to reinforce with buttresses and whatnot but yeah lines like there's at, least, there's at least a rope you can swing across now what well, we've, we've got the hook or the rock wrapped around the hook rope and we're throwing it across to see if it will stick just long enough for a step. <laughs> that is totally <laughs> true. 2018 <laughs> was like a bolo, I hope. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, guys. That Stretching was awesome. out the metaphor. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Lionel. Thanks, Jay. Thank you so much, Ty. Everybody, um, now I say this. We have a little bit of overtime, right? We go in, we're going to, we're going to downshift or whatever. Uh, obviously, I'm not a driver, but we've got a few more minutes. I like to say final thoughts. Does anybody have anything they wanted to add or ask or say? We, even though we've lost a couple people, we're still here. If 
final thoughts? Yeah, I have one. Great. Go ahead. I don't wish. Um, okay. Um, I want to ask about the chip situation. Does anyone know anything about the chips when they will be inserted in the trucks and, and what's going on with that? I won't be starting for six months, but I'm just wondering what's going on with the with the, with the chip situation. Talking about uh, the chips in new cars, or are you talking about parts on on big trucks? The chips in new cars that need to be delivered, like the, all the cars, like all the trucks that's sitting in Kentucky. Just sitting yeah. there in that big lot, just wondering yeah. what's going on with that. The manufacturers have been doing a thing called build shy, which basically means that they're building the, uh, the, the product to the extent that it can move off the plant property, but cannot be sold as a complete vehicle. And uh, so it has, you know, everything except for, you know, two or three or whatever number of, of parts in it. Um, all of those vehicles are going to have to come back to the assembly plants to have those final chips installed. And then after that, they'll be released alongside of the regular production. That's actually going to be uh, the, the, the tough part about this. And I'm, I, I know this isn't exactly the question you asked, but there's a reason I'm getting to this first. Um, but the, the, what's going to happen typically is that the manufacturers, when they're going to be doing repair, repairs to those build shy units, simultaneous to while their plants are pushing out, you know, still complete new vehicles. So what will probably happen, and Paul kind of alluded to this a little earlier, is that you're going to see production just sort of spike up because all of a sudden, instead of just 1,300 units a day or whatever it is that Kentucky is building, it's going to be probably something like 1,900 units per day with 600 units per day being processed as they add bad parts in and draw down the, all of that stored inventory. So the reason that I, I, I said all of this is because the manufacturers are not going to get to that point until they have not only a steady supply of chips to be able to keep their lines running, but also a steady enough supply of chips to draw down that inventory at a constant, at a constant basis. You know, in manufacturing, they, they have a job per hour metric that they figure that's how many units that they can repair in a, in a given time, a given hour. In addition to that, they're building, you know, whatever it is. I think Kentucky truck is something like 83 units an hour or some number like that over, uh, over a 16 or 18 hour period. So in order for them to get to that spot, they have to have you know, 140% of regular manufacturing supply of chips to be able to knock down that huge number of vehicles. And more likely than not, they're going to have a target date, usually an end of month or an end of quarter is how it usually tends to, to work out, where they're going to have to knock all those numbers down. So based on everything I'm saying, uh, if I was one of the manufacturers, domestic manufacturers that has this, you know, has this situation happening, I would say Q3 is going to be the big one. Uh, I think that they're going to be pushing uh, for um, a lot of production makeup that they lost in the first half of the year. And I think that Q3 is going to be a huge repair period for manufacturers as they, as they start to draw down all of that latent inventory. And the other thing I would say, and I, I don't want to speak for one or another because all the manufacturers are using different facilities. But if they have a large number of units, for example, in Kentucky, I think they've got a whole slew of vehicles parked at one of the of the of the race tracks. Yeah. Well, when's racing season? Because I promise you they're going to need that track back around that time frame. So you can probably expect to see a flood of vehicles. Even if those units aren't pushed back into market, they're going to end up having to be relocated because these large properties are not going to disrupt, you know, Kentucky Speedway is not going to disrupt its core business just so that that way they can, you know, continue to store a bunch of Ford's product. Uh, so I, I, I think, you know, that the economy of it is going to be the bigger driver in the drawdown as, as, we, as we move forward. Uh, I think the manufacturers by and large are getting their hands on the parts plus or minus a month of each other but I think that you're going to see all pistons fire, no pun intended, around the third quarter of this year. And I would say September, 
is going to probably be a month to remember if that if I was a betting man. And I, it's interesting because I had, there was a, it was like a fleet manager operations and he was saying pretty similar. It was at the show. He was like, watch out for Q4, right? But yeah, whatever week it is, yeah. Which is good. John, I mean, that's good news. I think John said he's getting into the business around September. So, uh, w welcome to the fire hose, pal. <laughs> that's... that's <laughs> Going to be a time unlike many other. And when you try to draw the algorithm of like the inventory and the driver shortages and then whatever happened in COVID and microchips and we were talking to Christopher Ludwig yesterday, you got to throw in Brexit. You know, you try to... What's that game where you pull the sticks out and all the marbles fall? It's like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the, the, the thing about it is that, um, you know, you, you can uh, hyperanalyze this stuff six ways to Sunday, and there are a lot of people that, uh, that, that do and, and that will. And, and reading the metrics is really important. I, you know, I can't stress enough how, how important that is, whether you're running a small business. I tell people all the time, if you're not measuring three things on a daily or weekly or monthly basis, then, then you're not managing your business. If you're measuring everything, you'll drive yourself crazy. If you measure nothing, you're blind. But if you're if you're not measuring three, th you know, you're, you're not doing, you're not paying attention. And I think so you do have to watch watch the, the, the core of the business, the fundamentals of the business, to see what it's going to do. But at the end of the day, one of the most over overused phrases in business. But at the end of the day, it's a real simple thing. Factories produce vehicles. That's how they make their money. They want to make money factories will find a way to produce their vehicles. Uh, that These stored units are creating a, an immense amount of cost. I think General Motors said it was a $2.5 billion hit to them for the year between all the storage, double handling, you know, property, you know, parts requisitions and all that other stuff. That's a huge number. And I, you know, so these people are, are here to make money. They're gonna try and conserve cost. The way to conserve cost is to draw down that inventory. So I, I think you can't overanalyze this. They want to be done with this just as fast as we want them to be done with it. So I like it. Pencils versus rocket ships. I got it now, and I love this. <laughs> would you, would, would this could be a, one of those questionnaires, um, could, do, you, do you look at the load boards? Would you talk to a company looking for a sub hauler? Would you go to dealerships? If you were kind of starting out to build your lane, is there a is there a number one recommendation? Well, I think it depends. Um, I mean, it depends on the size of your company. It depends on the scope of your lift. Uh, uh, Midwestern is lay, is laying the groundwork now for when you know when when this thing all really kind of busts loose. Um, you know, the strategic alliances and making sure that you know our relationships with other partner carriers are solid. Um, that's, that's because that's a direct function of our size and scope. Uh, if you're an individual, you know, looking to become a sub hauler, I, I would be beating on my door and trying to get all of the things lined up so that that way you can be hauling freight for me, you know, because the person who has access to the trucks is going to, is going to, is going to win. And, uh, so for me, the, you know, I, it, to me, there's an interest in, in building, a strong and reliable uh, capacity group uh, that I can push traffic to that's going to be above and beyond what my own fleet can handle. So you know, there's a symbiosis there that, that you know, if it was me, if I was in some of these guys' shoes where you're like, I'm, you know, I'm either in a car carrier or I'm in a four car carrier, I'd be picking up the phone with, with the local area uh, dispatch offices for folks like me that have a line to the business. Like where we can say, okay, well, I know when you get busy, where, where can you use me? What are your rates like? What are your insurance requirements? What paperwork do we have to fill out? You know, get all of that, that ugly stuff out of the way so that that way when it's go time, you're not messing around with, you know, did you docu sign this and you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, I love what you just said because that's one of the other things that I feel like I see. And that is that there are groups where 
you 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 write a check and you're part of it and now you have access and then there's kind of everybody else and we auto transport intel we're 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 the kind of the grassroots group like well shoot 95 percent of of the folks that i've seen and talked to don't have a group is there a way to start connecting those dots and like what you just said, the, I'm sure there's plenty of folks that are like, yeah, I, I actually don't know who to talk to to begin building such network and, and getting those answers. So, I mean, I thank you for that, Joe. That's really cool. And actually, that's why Ty and I, I know we're live. I talk like we're, you know, we're just on the phone like, hey, what's up, Joe? Um, but we're live. So the thing is that, you know, um, that's the value. Some of the, You bring a lot of value. Tonight you brought all this value with information, but you also bring this value with you've got some outreach and networking that you, that from that first show we did, when I met you in the lot with Ty, I'm mm -hmm. like, this is, this is, this is special. So thank you, man. I appreciate that. Love to help. I know. I like that. Did we lose Lino? Where'd he go? <laughs> Linda's like, oh no. <laughs> well, <that's good. laughs> I know. No, seriously, I, I never do this, but I got so hungry, I started eating some almonds I got at the show. Um, I'm sure that's what Ty's doing right now. He's like, he's probably yeah, wolfing is. down a steak or something. Is everybody else hungry? <laughs> I got a question for Lionel. Sure. Uh, you talk about the general lot, the mid dollar general, general liability policy. Is that addition, addition to what you already have? Yeah, that is in addition to what you have because the liability on your automotive policy only covers you for what you have on your trailer and what you do on your trailer. If you're driving that vehicle away from the car, it doesn't cover you. Okay. I'm in the process of doing my renewal now. I don't think the company I, that I have offers that, so I have to check into that. Well, your, your broker should be telling you about it, and that's, you know, that's, uh, look, I, I don't know if, you, you, you know, like most of the guys that I know that I deal with on this channel, I, you know, I don't, I'm not in this for money. You know, I, I like all my guys to be covered and, you know, just, just be out there and, and make a profit so we can continue on and do the things that we're doing. So I try to stay ahead of the game and, you know, all the regulatory things, we try to get them out of the way. That way you, when they pull you over or something happens, there are no questions asked. All right. That's cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to share a few links here in the um, in the live chat um, and I know we're about to wrap it up and so we just I, I think as a group we just not only do we appreciate that we get a chance to see each other and talk but the live chat itself the community itself for folks that watch later for people that listen to the podcast um, whatever it is that allows you to tap into what's happening. And, and again, I stress the importance. That's what's so great. We're not just sitting here talking to each other. People are now, as Ty says, there are lurkers out there. We have lurkers. We have folks checking out what's happening. What is this channel doing? Is there a way my business can participate? Is there a way I can, I can grow my business and, and fulfill my dream of auto transport? We also know that there are other channels, there's lots of videos out there, but what's different here is that, man, this is just, I know John McCain said, we're the straight talk express, and I thought, you know, that's just good. That's what we need. So, thank you for being part of this version of the straight talk express. It's really awesome and appreciated. Uh-huh. Awkward silence. You know? <laughs> and then that happens at conferences, too. And you just have to ride right through it. Like it was planned. Uh-huh. Hey, I, I was going to say this. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to networking with some guys on here. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, I know Lionel. Well, what's your company name? Because I, I definitely want to get a chance to uh, talk to you. Um, I got about six months before I start, so I definitely want to get all my ducks in a row before I get moving. 
And also the other gentleman above that I was speaking to earlier, I forgot forgot your name. But I definitely look into the network. That's for sure. I love it. And I'm putting it in the live chat here. So Lionel's company is CY Financial Solutions. But the best thing you can do is here's here's what you're gonna write down. You got it ready? Everybody's ready? Mm -hmm. Auto A U T O hyphen hauler h a u l e r dot com go to auto hyphen hauler dot com and there's the information for lionel and that's linda lionel and linda yates and man you're up and running did i get that right lionel yes indeed sir questions free fellas absolutely Quest free questions are free 24 7 get as much yeah. information as you can that's why you watch the channel that's why we watch the channel you know, Lionel, I'm not sure I understand exactly the focus of your business based upon your website. I think you might want to work on your clarity just a little bit there. <laughs> boy, that, I don't know how you got that domain, but boy, that's a... That's a, that's a I know, it's an incredible <laughs> domain. It is. Well, that's, that's the, there was a period of time. I, I think, I, I hope I get this right. I'm speculating live. There was a period of time where the hyphen was undervalued. Yeah. And I, I believe that time has, has far passed. Now it's like, yeah. do you want to get better auto oil insurance? Maybe hyphen colon dot com. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but, uh, oh, you gave us an idea, Jay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. If there was a period of time. It's like, it seems like everything where if you had a catchy phrase dot com, you could get that. But mm -hmm. we really, yeah, we're way beyond that now. Like you How you doing even, dot you, com? You can't yeah. even just hit a bunch of keys dot com and get that. That's gone too. Yeah. How we doing dot com, right? We're, pro we're probably on how we doing dot X, Y, Z. Maybe. Right? <laughs> biz. <laughs> dot biz. Actually, that's a great idea. Anybody out there looking at how we doing dot com, let me know. It's a guy in New Jersey. Well, well, <laughs> real quick, I'm in Indiana. Do you work with companies uh, everywhere? You talking Midwestern? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Lying out. Right? I work okay. with companies everywhere. Even if I don't write the policy, I'm still going to help you. Yes. Okay. Yes. I will be calling you all tomorrow during business mm -hmm. hours. We look, we look forward to Appreciate it. Your call. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Good to know you. Andre, let me know when you're all squared away. Okay, yeah, I was going to say that, too. I'm looking now on the uh, side. I'm about to hit your link as well, so definitely. All right, cool. And so, yeah, let's move over to uh, uh, Joe is with Midwestern Car Carriers. You want to go to mwcci.com, which I also just put in the live chat. Now, Joe, is that is there more that he should take down? But that that's that gets him started, right? Yeah, start start there. Start yeah. on the website. Uh, you know, it'll get all the key information, and then uh, you know once you get your your operating authority insurances settled and stuff like that, we can we can get you uh, the we call it the broker packet, where it'll have all the requirements for the customers that we have, and based upon your equipment, what you'd need. And then uh, you and Lionel become best friends and work all that stuff out. You know, Lionel and Linda work all that stuff out. And then from there, you know, we, we you know, then you start linking up. And, and as I said, you know, I may not be your first, you know, your your first jump into a network, but you still want to build those relationships, whether through me, through Interlink or Supreme or you know, Nationwide or all kinds of other carriers. Where there are a lot of friendly competitors in this business. Very cool. And I put uh, in the live chat, if you missed something, man, you just don't know what's going on anymore. Call Ty. That's a great, that is a great promotion to just call Ty. Um, or here it is, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And I, because I, I don't give out a phone. I got a phone sitting here. I just don't answer it. All right, everybody. Man, I love awkward silence. It's just so much fun. 
I want to thank everybody for being here tonight, taking the time and sticking around with us. Overtime lasted like 25 minutes, so that in itself is noteworthy. Yes. Uh, pull up my Four stars. Here. I gotta lo I gotta load up my game show sounds. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. There we go. Um, <laughs> guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. There is no other way to make a three-hour show without just some strange cutting up happening, right? <laughs> it's like we're at the fuel island together. It's the closest thing to it. We gotta Except give, none of us. We, well, we got to give I, Carlo something to do, right? We're just trying to <laughs> keep him going, right? We're his lifeline. What were you going to say, Gerald? Uh, I, I was going to make a comment about smelling like diesel, but I actually do smell like diesel today. Right? First. So... Um, all right, and John, take care of the little one over there. We all know what that's like, right? So that's good stuff. He was born la last week. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Thank Best you. thing in life. That is awesome. Yes. It is. Yeah, no, I just, and I just had Father's Day, right? Father's Day is fun. You know, Number a couple three. boys. Number three. Number three. All right. Well, happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. John, I have three as well, and boy, is it different when they outnumber you. That. <laughs> and my three over to you guys, and you can, you know, take care of them for me. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Mr. Ha Ha. Do, who does babysitting here at ATI? Yeah. yeah. I'm not, not me. I am not sure. Here's the, uh, baby. Here's the baby. <laughs> Oh, there we go. There's the baby. Oh, you got the problem. Awesome. awesome. This okay. is a fa this might is a family be, show. Right. It might be the mom. I don't know. This is what? great. Wow. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. And and Lloyd, Andre, Carlos, Lionel, Linda, Joe. Thank you guys so much. Really thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Thank, thank you, Jay. And Todd. And everyone you. else. Awesome. All right. I salute you. This meeting is over. Meeting adjourned. We'll see you next time. All right. See you, Jake. Right. Stay safe, everyone. Good night, everybody. All right. And there it is. And I ended the meeting. If I had my gavel ready, I would have banged my gavel. You know? Meeting's adjourned. Um, I always think somebody's in trouble when I hear a gavel. But, you know, it could just be me. Hey, uh, so, thank you. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you, live chat. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. This really was a very different roundtable. All the roundtables are a little different. Every show's still really different, even though, you know, we have different formats for the show. But, um, but overall, you know, we appreciate you joining our community, asking questions. Let us know how we can help. I want to thank Murphy Auto Transport Services. I want to thank Superflow Systems. I want to thank United Road and NVTA, and I want to thank Black Widow. Uh, thank you all so much. And thank you, uh, Bobbitt Business Media and Car Conference. Last week was amazing. I love conferences. I love bringing the conference to you wherever you are because your business deserves it. Thank you so much for taking the time. Let us know how we can help, whether you're live, on demand, or on the podcast. If you do miss the show, put it in the comments below. Feel free to send me an email. You got the phone number. Everything is in the live chat. And if you're just confused, go to autotransportintel.com. Click on sign up. Thank you so much, everybody. It's almost 11 o'clock. That's three hours. Thank you. Stay safe. Please join us tomorrow on DOT Compliance at noon. That's 30 minutes live with Brian. You can ask questions. That's a great show. And then Thursday, the NBTA one-hour special at noon. Check that out as well. We got the melting block of ice on Friday. Cars on the move. Dealers, auctions, carriers. Thank you, everybody. Here comes the car hauler. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon.